commission and they can follow or discard our uh, uh, resolutions and uh, although they don't normally do that and somebody everybody should know that somebody from this committee will be at the LPC meeting regarding whatever application is uh, in front of LPC and uh, we'll uh, have the applicants testify the uh, committee members can ask questions then we'll have the public ask questions then we'll close that part of the meeting and the committee will get together and form a resolution and we'll vote on the resolution. Uh, let me introduce everybody. We have again, my, uh, I'm Michelle Parker, my co-chair Kay Carpin. We have Jay Adolph here, uh, Paige is not here, Mark Diller, thank you. Clary Newwelt. Clary, do you pronounce your last name Newvelt or New No, Newelt. You got that one. Newelt. My first name is usually more of a challenge, but you're doing pretty well in that too. Okay. All right. Okay. Madge Rosenberg and Peter Sampton. All right. We also have uh, from our board our district manager, Max Vandervliet, the famous and hardworking man. Is Jesse here? Is she here? Um, Jesse is not here, but I do have an update. We are now streaming live. Um, okay. Mark, I'm gonna have to send you some revised credentials. I seemed to have mixed up uh, some numbers in a classic case of my dyslexia. So um, <laughs> off we go, sorry. All right. So uh, Kay. That's great, you solved it. <laughs> Kay, take it away. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Uh, once again, welcome. We're gonna start off with um, the proposal from 520 West End Avenue. That, so uh, I think we used to call that the castle on the corner of um, 85th Street. Who's here to present from that building? Do we know? Do we have? <laughs> Nobody? Hmm. Come on, that's the- Do they know they were going first? Uh, they did if they checked the revised uh, uh, thing, uh, the revised- The answer is they did not. Cancel, so yeah. they may not, they may not. So let's move on to the yeah, next. Okay. So do we um, could, I, could I say something about um, that one before we move on? I'm just, I don't normally multitask, but I'm actually looking at something Jesse just sent us about uh, something we're doing tonight, but I'm going to get back into um, full screen here. Um, I went by 520 this afternoon, if I may be yeah. permitted to say this, and I looked hey, for the Karen, notice. Clary, I don't mean to interrupt, but. If they're going to show up later, why don't we save the discussion till later? Uh, because if I could. Yeah, just say what you have to say. Yeah, let me just say this because it might move this or it might not, Jay. Um, so the, 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 only notice, the only notice I saw there um, was uh, had the correct address. It was posted on the side of the building. But the description of the work was the description from 471 West End Avenue. So there was nothing in the notice posted on the building that said it was about the garbage cans. I, I can't imagine how that happened. I don't know who prints the notices. Um, well, they had 520 West End Avenue, but it, it had the had correct the address, but it had the description. It had the description of the work at 471. And I only saw one notice there, but even if there was more than I one around there, it would have been. Can I call you later? Right. Paige, we can hear you. Paige, we can hear you. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Clary. Yes, I, I went by today and I didn't even see that one notice. Uh, and we have to just, I think, you know, we got, grew lax about that during the pandemic. And yeah. um, now it's time to uh, emphasize that more with all of our applicants. So, so, I mean, while I agree that we should try to see if they show up and, and look at it, you know, get back to it later, it might be that we choose to deny without or to disapprove without prejudice because the notice doesn't describe their own work. Or we can have them repost until a board, full board meeting. We used to do that at BCI. Whatever. Okay. okay. Paige is here. So Paige, Great. you agreed to take the minutes? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and and I'll right. introduce you to the 53 attendees, Paige Cowley on our committee. Thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Kay. Oh, okay, so let's move on to 471 West End Avenue. Uh, okay, uh, excuse me. 
Somebody yeah. named somebody named Figueroa, or now it's Samuel White. Samuel White. But Mr. Figueroa was raising his hand. I don't know if he was here for five twenty or not. I saw I that here. I'm going to promote. Uh, sorry, promote Samuel, uh, and then I. Oh, I can. You know, I see, Mr. Fe there we go. Oh, there's a couple now. And Frank Cheney. Here they come. Hi, are you um, here to present from which one? For which one? Which building? Frank and Sam. Oh, hold on. I'm here to present uh, 471 West End Avenue. I'm For Sam. 471. Likewise. And Same here. It, it, great. Is it anybody here? Uh, so nobody's here yet for 520. Is that uh, 520 West End? Is that correct? I am here. I'm here for 520. I'm here for 520. Oh, my goodness. I had some What's issues with start? getting in. With getting in. Okay. All righty. All right. Um, all right. Well, sorry about that then. Um, should sorry. we stick to our original plan and see what we can do with 520? I also heard um, you guys talking about posting notices. I posted the notices, which is on, in the attachments at 11 places. Um, okay. When I posted it last time, last month, um, they ripped them down two days later. I had to go back to the site. I had to repost them. Um, yeah. I did go back to the site. Um, I, I posted them on the 1st. I did go back on the 3rd and not of eight of the 10 that I posted were there. And I have not gone since, um, since last Thursday. Oh, so okay. I don't know. You said you went by and I do by the day. Yeah. a location of all places. I put it, I know which buildings don't like the postings because they, they take it down right then and there, right after I leave. So I try mm -hmm. not to put it in those buildings, but I did post them all over. That's a problem that we've had. And also that's why we put, you know, please leave this up until such and such a date. It doesn't have to stay up forever. It, it, it said it right needs, on the, on the, yeah, on the it notice. It needs to stay up so that people know what's going on and can, right. can participate. Okay. Well, okay, fair enough. Um, all right, let's hear, let's hear what you have to say and, um, and, and see if we can move ahead. Okay, um, so there was a PowerPoint that we submitted um, also. Uh, you guys know about the building yes. and on the back of the building on West um, 85th street are um, metal enclosures, black metal enclosures. Yes. They they're on the city property by about two feet. Um, huh. They're on our property, so to speak by a foot, foot, 10 inches. So, um, so we are encroaching on the street by two feet. It's on the drawings. Um, they, the owner um, received two violations. And uh, let me just kill this one. Do you, do you want to uh, share uh, your screen or do you want us to uh, um, show? If you, you could share, you share your screen, that would be great. Uh, is anybody set up to do that? Give me two I'm seconds. Sure. I'm working on it. They, oh, have okay. the, they have the ability to share screen. That'd be great. Well, they're going to do it. Well, no, I think. Or Mark. Who's going to I do think it? Mark's going to do it, right? I think that's where we, okay. okay. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Paige is speaking, but she's muted. I just. I, sorry about that. Um, I was just asking for the name and the relationship of the presenter for the minute. Okay. My name is Adrian Figueroa. It's on, the, on my screen. I yep. am an architect working for the building um, estate. Hmm. Okay, I think we're almost there. Mark Diligent Diller is on his way. There are no um, yeah non... apparently I need I need permission to get back to the to the latest plans. I don't understand. Why Zoom is so wonderful. Mm. Yeah. Is Max still, is that a Max thing or? A... I'm here. Okay. Uh, but whether that's a Max thing or not, I'm I, uh, <laughs> not sure. I, I literally have both meetings going at once. Um, Sorry. No, all good. This is technically the more important one. Uh, really? Is there something that I can assist with? 
Can I ask a question of Mr. Figure? Yes. Um, when you say you're uh, representing the estate, um, yes. are you acting as an owner's rep, architect? No. Uh, architect. Architect, thank you. And what's the estate? Um, it's just passed through um, the uh, people who own it. Um, they didn't have any children, so it went to the nieces and nephews. So there are a whole four or five of them. They're trying to figure out what to do with it, and then they're going to sell the building or try to keep it amongst themselves. So it's right now in an estate. Um, for our purposes, we're just interested Order. in the actual physical condition of the building and who's okay. in charge of the work. Thank you. Right. Okay. Are we getting anywhere with being able to take a look? No, they're not letting me in. So is, does somebody else have it? Mark, is this something that um, that we have or we can fix? It's the this... Google Drive is not letting me in. Can the applicants? Uh, um, yeah, yeah I happen to be in a different I... place, but I'm trying to get it um, on my computer so I could share it. So if you give me, if you want to go to the next person, it's going to take me about five minutes to put it all, set it up. I can wait. Why don't we do that? That's fine. Let's do that. Thank you. Okay. So we're, <laughs> here we are. We're back to 471 West End Avenue. And uh, please uh, come back to us and tell us, uh, tell us what you've got for us. I need to. Let's see if we can get a, a screen share on this one. Who's here for so please introduce more. yourselves uh, if you're here. And um, I see uh, Kristen. Let me promote Kristen. Sam is here. Hi. Um, my name is Andrew Katz, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak at this forum. Um, I'm here representing ownership um, of the building. Um, you know, we are a oh. family based real estate business uh, that's been operating on the Upper West Side for a number of years. Um, and with that, I'll sort of turn it over to Sam White, and I look forward to a successful presentation, hopefully project. Well, great. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. You. My name is Sam White from the firm of PBDW Architects, <clears throat> the architects for this project. Um, technical question, how are we going to uh, get our presentation up on the screen? Is this something that you have and can put up, or is it something that we should be putting up? Uh, you have capability to share screen. So if we share screen, which I will do, um, I guess, uh, Kristen, why don't you share screen and put it up uh, from your desktop? There it is. Okay, there it is. So I'll, that's uh, 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 Kristen Bauer, uh, the project architect, uh, who is going to be uh, advancing us through this presentation. The, uh, if you could go skip forward past this and the past the uh, uh, the uh, table of contents to so the next one, uh, and then to the next one, uh, 471 10th Avenue is in the expanded Riverside uh, uh, Historic District. There's the red uh, circle at the lower right-hand corner shows where it is. So it's clearly within the Historic District. If we could have the next one. Um, this uh, slide uh, is the, our application in a nutshell of the drawing on the left shows what we believe the building looked like originally. Uh, the drawing in the center shows what the building looks like now. And the drawing on the right shows uh, our application for what we want to do to the building. Uh, you can see we're restoring masonry, changing window openings, removing the uh, fire escapes, changing the material on the uh, mansard roof, removing the dormer and changing it for a sloped skylight, uh, and then adding a, uh, a one-story addition. Uh, this application is as of right uh, for zoning. Uh, the zoning does, even though this building doesn't uh, meet the uh, street wall requirements because it's too low, uh, you are nonetheless allowed to add an additional story uh, to, uh, to the building without having to comply with street wall. Uh, if we could move to the next one, uh, it shows the history of the building. The, the uh, I'd say the, the lineage of the building is pretty distinguished. This was part of a complex of uh, six townhouses designed by McKim, Mead, and White in the mid-1880s, I'd say during their progressive phase. 
uh, really an extraordinary uh, work. And 471 uh, is off to the left there. Uh, it was separated from the other buildings by a garden. Um, we have the next slide. Uh, what um, happened to this uh, after it was built uh, is the less good news. The, that uh, by 1910, uh, based on tax photos, we can see the stoop, a uh, very high stoop had been removed, uh, probably in anticipation of the widening of West End Avenue. Uh, it certainly would have gone about halfway out onto West End Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. By 1915, uh, the building had an addition to the roof. Uh, which you see there, the dormer was installed, which cuts through with the middle third of the cornice, uh, and the windows were relocated on the facade. Uh, next slide shows that by uh, 1939, they had added fire escapes to the front of the building. Uh, and by 1940, uh, the building had achieved, in terms of its street elevation, uh, its present condition. Uh, the uh, this is the helicopter view. For those of you who have helicopters, you see that it's sandwiched between two uh, tall buildings. Uh, the next slide shows the view from the street uh, where uh, it is uh, a, uh, described as a four-story building plus a basement plus a cellar. Um, if the next slide, please. Uh, across the street is another tall West End Avenue building and a school. Next slide. Uh, so these are photographs of the uh, West End Avenue elevation and of the backyard. Uh, I've taken you through the uh, elements of the West End Avenue elevation that were added. Uh, the backyard uh, is really, uh, I, is, I, I'm speechless in describing the backyard. Uh, <laughs> but so let's just let the, let the photograph uh, serve it. Um, the front has uh, some details. When they removed the stoop, they had to make the entrance uh, into the basement level so that you came down a couple of steps and then they built some masonry uh, around it. Uh, this is, uh, if you read the, uh, the historic, the designation report, it suggests that some of this is historic. And I think uh, that is for you to decide how much weight to put on that. It's certainly not original. Uh, and you saw from the tax photographs that it has been around for a while. Uh, we are going to be removing uh, pretty much all of what you see there. And so uh, we are asking you to consider this to be not particularly historic, but that is a decision that you would have to make yourselves. Uh, can we have the next slide? Uh, the, uh, in spite of the uh, problems this building has had, it still retains some just extraordinary elements. The uh, terracotta work at the cornice, uh, the whole uh, elevation is composed, in addition to this ornamental terracotta, of essentially two different bricks with two different, slightly different colors, but two principally different textures. Uh, and uh, so that there's a lot to be said for this building in spite of the rough treatment that it's had. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a comparison of the a photograph of the West End Avenue facade with a drawing of the proposed uh, changes. And then the next slide will show uh, a drawing of the existing West End Avenue facade with a drawing of the proposed. And you can see uh, in this that we are uh, restoring brick at the lower level, removing the uh, fire escapes, changing the location of window openings, uh, giving it a small stoop so that the door is now up above sidewalk level, uh, changing the material on the mansard roof from slate to copper, uh, removing the uh, dormer. Where is the stoop? You said uh, it's a, it's a, you can see it, uh, Peter, you'll be able to see it in the plan. It's like a three or four step stoop. It's right in, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's as much stoop as we could get without going out further than the existing improvements, which already go beyond the building line. So we, we are, there's a, uh, all of those, that brickwork and uh, sort of garbage can storage area that you saw is, is out in the, in the street, theoretically. It's past the building line. We, we are going no further than that. Uh, so it's a, so a, a small stoop. It brings you in a front door. You then come into a vestibule and you'll go up about six or seven more steps to get to the, uh, what will then be the proper first, technically the first floor of the building. Uh, so most of the most of what had been a tall stoop in the original has now been is inside the building because we can't get it outside the building. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, then um, 
uh, changing from the removing the dormer, uh, changing that to a sloped skylight, uh, and then adding a, a one-story addition to the top, which is set back. Uh, incidentally, you'll see at the end of this presentation, we did make we have made a mock-up, and it is in place, and you cannot see it, but we have photographs uh, of the mock-up. Uh, the next slide, Kristen. Uh, this is, shows what we're doing to the rear elevation. Um, uh, just focusing on the proposed, uh, the, we're extending the rear elevation approximately 20 feet to the west to create a 30-foot rear yard, uh, and then in, uh, covering that uh, new extended rear elevation with uh, terracotta and rain screen, uh, uh, steel windows uh, with balconies at the lower level and a uh, skylight at the top for a gymnasium. Uh, what I did not mention was on the front, the windows would be wood, uh, double hung windows. The next slide, please. Uh, so this shows the existing building in its immediate context as a drawing, and then the next slide shows the proposed building again in its immediate <coughs> context. Uh, the next slide, please, Kristen. Uh, the next two slides here show uh, juxtaposition of the existing and proposed section. Uh, this is the existing section is foregrounded here. Uh, and what you'll notice from it is that the uh, addition, the early addition of the fifth floor, the fourth floor actually, uh, was quite tall. Uh, and uh, when it was uh, used as a multiple dwelling, I think people would build uh, lofts within their apartments there. Um, the uh, uh, proposed, now the, for, the proposed section is foregrounded. It shows the extension in the rear. Uh, and it, what it shows is that our fifth floor addition um, is starting at a lower level where we're lowering the, the roof of this building by about five feet. We don't need a uh, 15 foot ceiling height on the fourth floor. So we're lowering the roof uh, and so that our addition uh, starts off five feet lower uh, than it would if it, we had built it on top of the existing roof. Uh, that We're maintaining uh, the geometry and uh, form of the existing mansard and that allows us to keep uh, those elements uh, that we're adding out of the sight line, and it also gives some privacy to that deck uh, that's created between the uh, fifth floor addition and the mansard roof. The next slide. Uh, so this drawing is a kind of a process drawing, uh, going from left to right, starting with what is there now and ending up on the right-hand side with what we're uh, proposing. Uh, the second to the left drawing shows the elements that we are going to be removing, uh, including or eliminating the, <clears throat> including the stucco covering, uh, the windows, some of the masonry openings, the fire escapes, the dormer, the slate on the roof, uh, the door downstairs and all those improvements out of the street, just a little past the street line. Uh, the third drawing shows the masonry and roofing elements that we will be adding uh, to the building and the fourth drawing shows the uh, final design. If I could have the next slide, please. Uh, the uh, we believe that there is a, uh, a amiable tradition uh, in New York of these uh, sort of skylit uh, studios at the top of uh, at the top of townhouses. And uh, I think that the skylight, the slope skylight is going to be a lot less aggressive than the uh, existing dormer. Uh, and that is why we prefer it. <clears throat> if I could have the <clears throat> next slide, excuse me. This is a materials board for the <clears throat> for the bottom, the original portion of the building. Uh, the two bricks you see in the center there are the two bricks that we'll be using to uh, re uh, replicate the brick patterns of the original. Um, they are very, very close to the original. I mean, we, we had brick samples up there on the fire escape, and we're really pleased uh, with what we came up with. Uh, the terracotta ornament will be going uh, as surround or around the front door and also over the service door uh, that will alternate with the uh, quarry tile, and then uh, the windows will be painted black, and uh, lamp fixtures will be uh, dark bronze, uh, and there will be a little date uh, plaque uh, just to the right of the service store, indicating the original date of the building and the date in which uh, it has been rebuilt. The next slide uh, shows what we're doing up uh, at the mansard level, uh, where we're replacing the slate uh, with the copper. Uh, and I would like to say about that, that I think and this is just a, a sense that I have that a that a, a slate roof, a slate roof looks like you mean it. And uh, 
a slate roof looks like it was designed to have a roof and the roof would be slate. Well, uh, I think in New York City, these elements that are clad in standing seam copper have a kind of a uh, almost a quality to them of um, not being intended fully, but more necessary. There's something I think a little bit uh, less uh, sort of assertive about a uh, copper roof than there is about a slate roof. And I think as the original building had no roof there whatsoever, I think that the copper is more appropriate in this case. Uh, otherwise, the elements are uh, metal uh, for the skylight and uh, uh, then the, uh, the addition on, that is set back on the roof will be a light gray uh, insulated panel uh, with uh, sliding uh, Nana type uh, doors, uh, glass doors leading out onto that terrace. The next slide. On the back, the uh, upper left shows the uh, terracotta uh, that will be the principal element, uh, the rain screen. Uh, the windows will be metal windows by, made by Criddle. Uh, they'll be painted black. The metal work will be black. Um, and the uh, glass will all be clear. Uh, that's a gymnasium up at the top of the roof, uh, the top of the building. Uh, these drawings just show you in greater detail what we're doing down at ground level. The uh, public will be able to see the, uh, the what we're doing on the west and avenue facade. They won't necessarily be able to see uh, what we're doing on the uh, back facade, although I think the neighbors are going to appreciate it after looking at that backyard for a while. Um, uh, so this is just a continuation of the kind of patterning uh, that we uh, that was set up by the building that you would have found in the original and then uh, a sort of an aesthetic period take on a door surround. The next slide uh, shows where um, for the portion of the building where the brick is no longer there. What happened was I think they they chopped into the masonry and they relocated a lot of masonry openings and then just sort of bricked them up in a haphazard way and then covered the whole thing with with the sort of a thin layer of stucco uh, so that they didn't have to do any matching of brick or, or sort of fitting the thing together. Um, we do not think it would be advisable to chop into that wall to uh, replace the brick in the pattern that we want. And so we're proposing to add a width of brick uh, proud of the existing wall and then uh, tie it back in and around the second floor as shown in that detail on the right. Uh, the next slide uh, shows just more details around the door there. This, this focuses on things like uh, TV monitors and uh, little, little cameras, uh, uh, intercoms, the things that the landmark staff cares a lot about and would like to see uh, early rather than late in the presentation. Uh, and then uh, this slide shows the details around the sloped uh, skylight, which we're keeping. Uh, it's a we'll be a little bit proud of the existing, uh, just a few inches proud of the existing of the proposed uh, copper. Uh, cladding on that roof, uh, and it will be a combination of a fixed glazing on the sloped portion and then operable uh, windows on that portion, <clears throat> which is vertical, which is right behind the cornice that you see. Um, uh, and then these are the plans. The, uh, typically, the existing plan is at the top. The proposed plan is at the bottom. And if you skip one more plan, Kristen, uh, uh, you'll start to uh, uh, Peter, you'll start to see the stoop in the lower right-hand corner there. And if you go one more plan, I think you'll see the stoop in its full glory there. That's the stoop, Peter. Um, so, uh, And then, as I say, it brings you up as far as we can uh, without uh, going out onto the sidewalk. And then uh, the rest of the vertical rise is accommodated uh, in, the, in that vestibule entry uh, inside the front door. Uh, Going forward through these plans, then it's just it's a domestic pro residential program. It's got a, a primary bedroom, primary bathroom. This is how uh, people like to live these days with a, a lot on one floor. And then above that, it has children's bedrooms, guest bedrooms, and then uh, leading to on the top floor, uh, a gymnasium uh, with <coughs> a sauna, cold plunge bath, uh, and then a, a small kitchen with an outdoor terrace. Uh, and that is ah, the, the uh, elevator. Stone. Excuse me. The elevator doesn't go up to the top floor. The elevator does go to the top floor. The elevator does not go to the roof. Uh, uh, so um, 
uh, so you have to the roof yeah you have to you'll have to climb up the roof yourself but you'll be in such great shape from that gym that that will not be a problem <laughs> um the uh, uh, and then the last two images I think show the uh, our drawing for the mock-up as I say this mock-up is uh, on the existing roof the the new roof is going to be five feet lower than that uh, so there'd be five more feet added to the bottom of that mock-up but the height of the mock-up is accurate uh, we do not block any windows interestingly those windows that you see in this photograph uh, were bricked up years ago I mean that's that's a, a wood double hung window but there is a brick wall behind it uh, so we do not believe that we are uh, blocking anyone's windows with this proposed addition. And I believe that is the end of this presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to start with questions uh, from the committee. Um, I'll start with one. Has it been uh, abandoned for a while? Do you know? Uh, it has been abandoned for nine years. There was a fire. Um, uh, mm -hmm. In the uh, in the the fourth floor front apartment, uh, the building department issued a vacate order, and it has been abandoned for nine years. Right. Yes, I live kind of across the street and down the down the lane. So uh, yes, I'm glad to see you. You kind of had me at getting rid of the uh, fire escape, but we'll see. <laughs> well, we just think what we could have saved if that's all we did. You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, let's go to Mark and then to Paige with questions or comments. Thanks. Um, I'll do questions now. We'll 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 wait to yeah. hear the public before comments, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, the front doors. There are two of them. Um, am I correct that I don't see glass panels? And is there a reason for that? Because you often do see glass panels in front doors of townhouses of this of this vintage. I you know I th thought about that. The the answer is there is there are no glass panels in those front doors. There are um, there are. TV camera is right next to the front door, uh, and then there is a window right next to the service door in that uh, lower section there on the right. Um, I, I, you know, I've seen it both ways, and my sense is that the uh, given the ambitions of the owner for uh, the development of this building, uh, I suspect that the people who buy it are not going to be terribly interested in having people looking into their house. Okay. Um, I notice on the, the, what I'll call the area way new window, it, there's what appears to be an iron grill. Am I reading that correctly or am I just making that? Yes, up? there would be uh, the original drawings of the, the, the original photographs of the, of the photographs of the 1884 uh, development had a low metal spoked fence running around the perimeter. We are trying to recreate that. So I'm just wondering why the the if that's so, oftentimes that same grill feature is on one or both of the doors, the service door and the main door. I'm just wondering why that is going to stand there by itself without a, a companion or a parallel. Are you su suggesting that that in addition to the the metal fence that we consider having we could have we are in fact proposing to have metal grills on the window that is next to the service door right that's the one i'm referring to because it looks like there's one right i'm going to point at it with like this is really going to be helpful to you i'm going to point at my screen um <laughs> the uh, the window next to the service door has a grill but the service door itself doesn't i guess that's because there's no glass in it is that basically that is, that's answer? correct yeah okay all right. These are these are details, obviously. One thing that I want to clarify is that, and this is very, leave it here for one second, and then we'll flip, I hope, the slide. It looks like 29, because the, the, uh, the, 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 the window in the mansard, whatever, you know, whatever you call that. The skylight, this, yeah. The skylight window there. It looks like there's a divided light at the bottom, which kind of flips upside down the, um, the windows on the rest of the front facade. And I think that's a nice effect, but if you flip to a slide, I think it's either 20 or 29, um, which shows- You have to uh, let her in, I can't. Okay. Uh, keep going there, nope, uh, whoop. Um, yeah, go back one. There's, there's a, Christian, there's a like detail, there the, there's a detailed drawing of that, uh, of the upper portion. Yeah, yeah, right there. there okay. It is. There it is. Now it looks like there's a divided light at the top. And so, which doesn't agree with the previous slide we just saw. Uh, I'm wondering which one you intend. No, the, the, uh, 
the gla the glass divisions are going to be roughly 20 inches apart, the vertical divisions uh, separating those glass, they'll be full length in the slope portion, the glass will be full length, but it will be 20 inches wide, say, with the um, we're trying to keep the scale small on this, and that's on the sloped portion, and that's all fixed and uh, uninterrupted vertically. And then the lower portion, which is again approximately two feet high, which is the height of the cornice, uh, those are operable windows, again, approximately 20 inches wide, uh, following the, the rhythm of the division up above. But you're shaking yeah, you're your head. So I think I, I'm asking the question badly, so I, let me try it one more time, and then I'll give up. Um, <laughs> if you look at this drawing, you'll see that there's division in the light. You have a nice line that seems to connect to the 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 cornice or the the the, the, the parapet or whatever it is that's up there. Right, exactly there. Yeah. Um, and that is something that we saw on the elevation several slides before. But now looking at this, it looks like there's another division. Is it the case that what we're seeing up there is the oh. beginning of the sloping back? Is that what that is? Um, what, what's happening is that the glass, we are carrying the glass higher than the seal. Because we wanted the proportions as you see them, we are carrying the glass higher than the ceiling of that room. And so that div division uh, just was a way of acknowledging this. You can see the ceiling of the room coming in. And so uh, I, I, miss, I misspoke when I said it was uninterrupted. It has this, uh, it's two fixed, each bay of this skylight has two fixed panels uh, because we have a, a ceiling uh, running into that uh, cross mountain that you're describing. Yeah, so I just think that that your earlier drawing doesn't correspond to what I'm seeing here. So maybe you want to fix that. Thank um, you very much. We will take care of that. Um, and then the final thing is, um, am I correct that the rear yard, there are no extant uh, townhouses to the, to the uh, north or south? This is it, because um, you're proposing a full height addition. Um, and I might have more to say about that, but if there's no other townhouses next to it, I might have less to say. Uh, there, there are townhouses going down 82nd Street once you get past the big apartment building at the corner. Uh, so to the west of us, uh, townhouses going down 82nd and townhouses going down 83rd, but they both, both of those townhouses, rows of townhouses start about, <clears throat> I don't know, Right, hundred feet, is seventy-five feet past our our rear elevation. It's actually quite a remarkable sight when you go to that because essentially you are looking straight west. This sort of un uninterrupted view straight west because of the backyards. It's quite unusual that you don't have a situation, a typical townhouse situation, where you have windows that are looking into the windows of the townhouse on the the next street. Uh, so nobody kind of looks into your windows. It's really great. Yeah. So, but the, this this answers, I think, is that there's no other townhouse buildings. You're sandwiched in between two tall apartment buildings. Yeah, mm -hmm. our our backyard ends before the townhouses begin on the side streets. Got it. That's everything for me. Thanks very much. Sorry for the time. All right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Paige. Um, just picking up on the sloping glass, the top quadrant of the um, glass um, that slopes. Is that clear glass? It's clear glass, yes. So um, um, even though that it it has no view to any anything behind it, right? That is correct. Okay, great. Um, my colleague, um, I thought he was going to ask my question. The second question is: um, Is this a single family house? I may have missed that. Well, currently it is. It's a CFO is for ten apartments, but the plan is to make it a single family residence. Okay, great. And then the only thing I didn't see is any, um, and maybe you've hidden it so well, because um, you're so experienced in, in McKim Mead and White, um, any, any AC equipment, any you 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 stick the knife in and twist it. You know we've been <laughs> there, <laughs> there. There there will be there will be there will be HVAC equipment on the roof. You know I'll just a little inside to the uh, to the industry. 
trying to get some uh, something out of mechanical engineers for the last month has been impossible because they have all been trying to finish projects in order to file them before the November 8th change in the code. Right, and right. so they all tell you that they'll give you what you want and then they don't give you anything. <laughs> so well, but we, we will be going to landmarks and by the time we go to landmarks, we will have uh, mechanical equipment shown on the roof. We will have had a consultation with a acoustical consultant to make sure that the mechanical equipment conforms to the uh, noise limits of the city code. And we will have taken any uh, sort of precautions in terms of sound attenuation that we have to to bring them into compliance. That's good to hear because basically this will be a ricocheted um, pair of walls. So any noise there will um, no doubt impact both apartment buildings. Um, and you mentioned, you showed the picture of the blank um, windows that are not used. Is that the case for the building on the other side? Yes, it's both sides. Okay, thank you. Good clarification, thank you. All right, thanks Paige. Um, Clary? Yeah, uh, guys, could you please go back to the last uh, drawing that you were, sh Mark was concentrating on with you with the, how the, window the skylight was configured um you had it on for quite a while just a while ago is it was it, it you had it in in profile you had um but maybe i can ask from this way and um, so this is the fourth floor not the fifth floor sits on top but this, this is, is the fourth, fourth this is the fourth okay. floor it's a and that's the one you were looking at with mark floor, yes. okay yes oh no i see here too so my question is if all of this above is fixed at, at what's slanted and then what's below, my understanding was, and I think the drawing on the left shows those is operable. Are they not flat against the back of the cornice? Uh, it looks they, to me like they're operating. You open them and you, you're flat against the cornice. No, the, the, the you know, when they put the dormer in, in you know, 1910, they cut out the middle third of the cornice. Oh, it's okay. Completely removed. So this is, right. the, this is the void. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, right. yeah, right. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah. that and that's the fourth and floor. And one of the things we're doing actually is we're in removing that cornice, we are rebuilding about a two feet of brick at the bottom of that dormer because you there's two feet of brick that we can rebuild using our the brick that we can get before you hit the really tricky terracotta there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, a couple more questions that might be related to each other. I went there by by there today. Um, to try to see what could be seen from any public way. And um, boy, if, if you've got a mock-up up there, I sure couldn't see a thing. <laughs> walked all, I walked all the way down, a, well, down 82nd Street going west, and it appeared that that very large apartment building on the corner pretty much blocked any view from that street of whatever was going on on your roof there. Um, but um, what I was trying to figure, I was looking to see about notices. I didn't see any notices posted. Um, I couldn't get up to the actual facade because guys were working there. There was scaffolding and guys were actively working on the facade. So my question is number one, what's with the notices? And number two, what were they doing on the facade today if this is an application we're just looking at tonight? <laughs> Well, I, I don't. I don't think they were sneaking a little project in. Andrew, no, I'm I didn't mean to turn suggest this that, over to you for the, for the notices. Um, uh, as far as the notices are concerned, I uh, I posted notices on every piece of street furniture, <laughs> halfway down 82nd as well as 83rd Street uh, towards Riverside Drive, as well as on all the street lights. Uh, <laughs> fronting West End Avenue uh, between 82nd and 83rd Street. Um, I did notice a few had been removed, mm. uh, but I saw them as largely intact when I walked by the building on Tuesday. I wasn't by mm. yesterday or today. Um, so I, I do not dispute your account, but uh, I am surprised to hear yeah. that. Well, Andrew, I didn't do a thorough search in the neighborhood, uh, but I didn't see any opposite the building or for that matter. Was, the front I, of the building. I was there. Um, yeah, we, we were there two days ago and there was one yeah. on the lamppost directly uh, opposite I, the front door. I right did there. also give copies of the notices to the superintendents at both of the apartment buildings on either yeah. side of our 
uh, property so that they may distribute those notices to their <laughs> residents. Um, I didn't feel comfortable walking in there and taping them up in their lobby without their permission. Right. Good for you. Um, okay, enough on that. Is there anything relevant of, to our application I, tonight about what those guys were working on in the facade? I'm not aware of anybody that was on the facade today. There were some guys there when I went by this afternoon about so, three o'clock. I don't know. So I, I am surprised to hear that. I am. Yeah. And I will investigate the matter as best I can. But nobody was on this building with my permission today. OK, I have one final question and it's a little bit amorphous, but uh, given how radically different this building became quite a long time ago from its original configuration. So it's even though it's a complete wreck. It does have some, histo some history to the current facade. Um, but my, my question is, to what extent are you trying to, or do you believe you should be, or does, do you think LBC, LPC believes you should be trying to um, evoke the original uh, facade here, I, I, leaving I, aside I, the, the uh, rooftop addition? I, I'd say that what, what we're trying to do is to honor the remaining portions of the building uh, that you know you could do a, you could do a design in which you created a kind of a contrast with the uh, a, a contemporary contrast with the with what was there now, uh, and I it just because they're so equal the what was taken away and what is still there are sort of fifty fifty uh, that's a very hard uh sort of combination to make i mean peter you know if you're trying to make an addition to a building you want to you don't really want it to be the same size as the as the building you're adding to so so i'd say that we were motivated by the fact that the what was remaining was so good that we thought that we should try to honor that by continuing it and you are keeping the original, I guess it's terracotta above the fourth floor windows. That's original. You, and you always bet. stayed there, right? Yeah, I would bet. also, I would also note, and he's going to get mad at me and maybe I'll make him blush, but we called Sam in part for, because he's uh, for both familiar with the original architect's work and one of the foremost uh historians on the matter, frankly, um, and sort of that's why we developed the team we have. Thanks. That's it for Thank my you. questions. Comments later, I think, but questions, that's it. Right, right, right. And um, we want to ask you if you have a, um, a date uh, calendared yet at LPC. I, I think it's the, the 15th of December. Is that correct, Kristen? It is the 13th, 13th. of December. 13. I think it's the week following the full board community uh, hearing, community board hearing. Okay, thank you. Then I'll uh, move on to Peter. What you got, question-wise? Um, I'm, I'm a little perplexed on the um, uh, elevation on West End Avenue. Uh, you, it's sort of hard to see what is existing and what is new, uh, even though you have some of the uh, former elevations there, but um, the windows on the parlor floor um, obviously new, uh, but there seems no alignment with the windows above. They're just popped in um, in some way, and um, I would assume that it would be a better idea to find some sort of alignment there, but it's it doesn't seem to do it. Yeah, we we looked at it, Peter. We um, it's it just that at the at the entry level and the parlor floor, there's a lot going on. We originally started with three windows, and then we that was so crowded, we took it down to two windows. We were aware that they did not align with the windows on the third floor, but we did align the parlor windows with the service door down below. So we're trying to get some alignment, but um, uh, but it just wasn't. Uh, you know, if you look at the original all the way on the left there, uh, the same lack of alignment occurs uh, between the parlor floor and the third floor. Uh, so um, we looked, we, we moved them around. We felt it was a little crowded. We took it down to two windows and this is where we ended up. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Anything else at this point, Peter? Yeah. Are you okay? 
Okay, and Clary and Paige, <laughs> are we going back? Or you still have your hand up from before? Oh, oh, I'm oh. so sorry. I should have brought lowered my hand. Sorry, me too. Um, okay. We're just there to confuse you. Oh, thank you. It's so easy to do. <laughs> um, I think then at this point we could move on to um, any public questions. Uh, is there anyone here from the public who would like to um, raise a question or, or in this case, make a, a comment? Uh, just raise your virtual I hand. I see a few of them. Um, I'm just gonna Great. go in order here. Perfect, thank you. Uh, David first, uh, then Josette, followed by Sandra. Hi, can you hear me? I guess. Uh, this is, uh, David Hughes. I live in the apartment next to where this actually, the, the pictures of that board of window, that's actually my bedroom. Uh -huh. that is. Um, do you have any other illustrations of how it's going to affect this building? Because I'm looking out my window, and if you extend, if that extends back 30 feet from where it is now, which is what I understand you guys said, if that's wrong, let me know. I, I don't know how that can block at least two thirds of our apartment. It's from our daughter's room. It's the only thing we'd be able to see. I just, I just um, if there's other illustrations, other something that can show that, because I'm looking out the window and I don't see how it's possible that we're not going to be completely blocked in by this. And my second question, what's the time frame you think this is going to be? Because it seems like it's going to be uh, pretty, uh, you know, disruptive. Right. Okay. I got it. I can answer the, this, or I'll try to answer the second question first, which is that I think that the construction would be uh, ready to start in the spring. I mean, we get through landmarks, hopefully in December uh, or January, if there's a second hearing, and then uh, finish up the working drawings, bid it out. So it's going to be a March or April construction start. Um, I didn't completely hear what you had to say about your windows and our extension, and I apologize for that. Yeah, okay, no, that, that, that's fine. I'm just, and, um, I'm not seeing how it doesn't obstruct us, I guess. But I was wondering if you had any other illustrations or any pictures or anything that kind of shows that, because you said looking out my window, if that extends 30, are you saying it's gonna extend 30 feet out further from where it is now to the west? Okay. Um, It'll have a 30 foot rear yard. We so we're not extending yard. We, we, we 30 have a, feet. We have a, about a 20 foot extension and a, leaving a 30 foot rear yard. Um, oh, so the, 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 the current roof deck that's out the back, is that being extended at all? You see, you see the, you see the roof, dot, in this drawing, you see the roof dotted in behind the elevator bulkhead. That's so that's so. that's what's yeah. there, yeah. and so we're going up, you know, six feet or seven feet, and then going back and going up. But I can, you know, if you if you send us, if you send me an email okay. to s that's an s is in Sam White s White at p is in Peter b is in Boy Scout d is in David w is in Whiskey dot com s White at pbdw.com we would like to meet with you and make sure that we are not causing you some kind of harm because we don't believe we are, but I would like to find that out. I, I appreciate that because yeah, I just want, we just want to understand, I guess, because, you know, right. we, we don't want to lose the view that we have of that. Because <laughs> as, as you can see, the other, our bedroom windows are the ones that are blocked out there already. <laughs> um, all right, th thanks a lot. I appreciate it. We'll send an email. Okay, thanks for, thanks for coming and, and participating. Okay, uh, who's next, Max? Is that Josette? Uh, I see Josette Amato. Go ahead, Josette. Uh, just click it one more time. Josette Amato, West End Preservation Society. First, I'd like to say I've been looking at this building since the fire and wishing and praying that somebody would do something with it. So this is wonderful news that it's actually going to be taken care of and hopefully loved. And I have a question for you. And if you could point me to another townhouse in the surrounding area that has a copper rooftop to a townhouse. Uh, I, um, uh, that might take some walking on my part, but- uh, okay. 
<laughs> okay, because I can't think of one offhand no. myself. But, did, um, but did, did you see, did you, I, I was trying to explain why I thought the copper was going to be more pre appropriate than the, the slate, that the slate looked like it was a roof that had been designed. I mean, if you were designing this house and you were designing it from the get-go, you would put a slate roof on. And I thought the copper had a uh, had a quality of uh, sort of not being part of the original masonry design. It detached itself in some sort of temporal way from the from what was below. And I, I don't want to sound like an architect talking baloney, but uh, uh, it just felt appropriate to me in a way that the slate did not. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And who's next? Um, I believe David Hughes. I think we are. We, we already heard from I, I, I already went. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> I think okay. it's Sandra. Uh, yes, it is. Go ahead, Sandra. Just click the prompt. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you so much for taking my question. And thank you so much for buying this property and doing something with it. Because I too have been looking at uh, this eyesore since I actually watched the fire burn from my window next door. So I'm mm. happy that you guys are doing something. Um, it'll do a lot for the block. But given that, um, I do have a few questions. Um, yeah, so it's no secret. I live in 465 next door. And you guys showed a picture of mock -up, a mock-up, but it's not clear to me um, what we're actually looking at. You showed the, like a wooden, yes, um, back one slide to the one with the orange netting. Yes. So what does the top of that orange netting and wooden structure show us? How does that relate to the elevation that you were showing us? Does that show? Yes. Kristen, do you have, do you have a, a, the larger section? There, okay, good, all right. Why don't you, that cor corner right there, that mm -hmm. is the top of the mock-up and you can see how it's, it's, whereas it's a full height above the proposed, <coughs> roof the proposed uh fifth floor it's only about five or six feet above the current uh roof okay but i'm looking at this and what i'm missing and maybe um i believe it was david was alluding to is we don't see the matchup of this elevation juxtaposed against the side of each of the neighboring buildings because what i do see now is i don't know if that's staircase or elevator elevator shaft but now that is a lot taller and i don't know what that will block and it's not clear to me how close it'll be to the buildings so it will be right up against uh the if you're if you're the building to the south uh it's right up against the building to the south but you're right that we have we have a survey showing the uh outline of the uh, building next door, and we will, uh, when we go to landmarks, we will have uh, mapped out the overlay of the proposed elevator bulkhead against any windows uh, on the uh, south the south uh, south building. So I'm going to take that, and I, I totally understand how you're thinking, and um, you're you looked at the buildings and said these windows are blocked up and i'm just going to take a wild guess that somebody blocked them up because it wasn't safe for or they they didn't feel comfortable looking right out onto a roof right outside their window so they blocked them up but if you raise the level of the that the 471 you're going to have a whole nother group of people so while you say it doesn't well, might not, not block windows, you're going to have that same scenario where there's a whole uh, another score of people who feel that they may need to block up those windows in order to feel safe. Um, so that is something to understand and consider. Um, yeah, so I, I think, I think for the first thing to do is, is to draw it and, and measure and draw it and, and understand it. But yes. OK, so that's one. And then noise. I remember when we renovated our apartment, 
we had to very, very carefully think and plan how we, how and where we put um, the items related to the AC because the air conditioning, because the air handler couldn't be within a certain distance of someone's living area and all of that. So right now, as I look at my window, I don't see air conditioning equipment on the roof next door. But if that air conditioning equipment is going to be out there in this narrow area, it's going to be very close to people's living area. So yes, you talk about noise abatement and all that, but we all know that it will be like, it's going to be a real challenge. And there's a lot of people who live whose windows face that corridor. And as someone mentioned, that noise can echo. And so I just want to make sure that I bring up the point that it's not a little thing and it could affect a lot of people. And there's a whole backyard and all that where um, equipment could potentially sit. I think our super's equipment sits on the ground floor because it, it doesn't bother other people. I just want to point that out. Fair, fair enough. Right. Thank um, you, Sandra. I have one uh, other point. The, oh, the notice please. tonight didn't mention adding another floor. And maybe I'm, this, I'm not an architect at all. I just read through the document and it didn't mention adding a floor. So I don't know if that's, that, is that okay? Is that how this usually works? It's kind of an open forum to discuss what you want to do with the building. I'm... Uh... Uh, you, you, you're catching me at a disadvantage because I'm not looking at the notice uh, uh, in terms of its text. Uh, it certainly, I think what we submitted to um, Community Board 7 indicated that we were adding a floor and expanding it out the rear. Uh, certainly, we're not, we're not trying to trick anybody, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's okay. I just was trying to understand because if others saw this notice and it didn't, it, it says... If you didn't and say it, that is a that is an oversight. And yeah. the expansion of an existing rooftop addition. So I don't I don't know if other people might have been more concerned and attended this meeting. I, I'm just bringing up points <laughs> here. Yep. The, you, you're right, Miss, that it does say expansion of existing rooftop addition, which can can be read either as straight straight what it says or adding another floor but we'll be mindful of uh, of those details in the future and our committee's job is not to take apart the applicants um, plans but just to determine the appropriateness of the proposed changes it's a somewhat okay. limited um, uh, mandate or mission, but uh, but we we are we don't take apart the we don't suggest other ways to to build, and we don't. Uh, well, I'll just leave it like that. We, At the same time, I, 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 appreciate, to us. I appreciate the the observations and suggestions. Mm -hmm. And right. and typically, that's right. An applicant will will does that, and we appreciate that you do that. Okay, we have three more uh, hands up in the um, among Thank the you. attendees. We do. Um, oh, and now just uh, Maxine and Ian Goldman. Two for when? Oh, they sorry, they, they keep moving a little bit. Hi. There we go. Should be good. Hi. Hi. Welcome. So we we are the apartment that bricked our wall. We're on the sixth floor at uh, four sixty five West End. And we bricked it when we, we, we did a full renovation because we didn't feel safe because we were right up against a deck and somebody could climb or whatnot. So we were that apartment. Um, can you please show us the back of the apartment, the, the view, not the one that you just showed, but like the whole back of the apartment? Kristen, can you go to the, there. Um, that one, is that what you wanted to see? Or plans or? Is there one with, yeah, is there one with plans? You want to see an elevation, right? Yeah, I think we're trying to see from the top down uh, because, you know, I, I understand that you're butting up against the building at, at the uh, at the eastmost part of our building, but the westmost part of our building cuts in and that's where we run the risk of, uh, I think it was uh, David 
uh, had brought up the problem of blocking and other issues, you know, getting too close to apartments that do have uh, mm -hmm. space. I don't know how close you're planning to come. And that's what we're trying to see. Uh, maybe a top down view of how yeah, close think, this. Well, if you if you go, uh, Kristen, if you go back to that rear view for one second, um, if you look at the um, at the, the ground floor of this photograph of the back, uh, it goes out about as far as we are planning to go out. And so, the first so, that, so if you if you kind of measure that against the the windows to the in the building at 465 uh, that overlook it, uh, you get a sense of how far out we are going. We're going to, I'd say, uh, this this photograph shows the two bays of windows facing north. Uh, we would be going past the first bay and probably, it looks like we're stopping, or we're very close to stopping short at the second bay of windows. But that's, that's I don't know if that helps you at all. But that's the only... At this point, that's the only description we have uh, uh, of of the proximity to that back, back bay of windows. I guess is it three win? I think it's three windows, right in the inset section of the four sixty five yeah. building. Uh, you should have a uh, picture of those windows um, on the uh, that are, are going to be blocked. Correct. We, we, I'm sure we have a lot of pictures, Peter. We'll, we'll have to dig them out. They're not on so, this presentation. So yet. since we're directly affected, is there, I mean, should we email you? Because we'd like to see, you know, where this is budding up. And as the first gentleman said, so it, should I just email you? Is that easier? Yeah, just e email, please. Okay, because I just like to see sort of like where things are going. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, thanks for coming. Thanks for participating. Uh, who's next, Max? Uh, looks like we have Christine Generet. Go ahead. Okay, welcome. Hi, thanks. Um, we are also in 465 West End Avenue and we are on the seventh floor and it just echoing what everyone else has said, it's, it seems to me that this is actually going to greatly affect our quality of life, the sound, everything. Um, I also was really shocked to, when I, to first see these pictures and see that the elevation is as much as it is. Um, the notice was definitely not clear with that. And, you know, we sent people to the DOB to look for what you filed and there was nothing there. So I do feel like that was not really worded in a proper or clear way. And I believe that if you had made it clear that you were adding this much of an elevation, you would have twice the amount of people at this meeting. So I just want to say that. The other thing is the noise is a very real issue. Having an entire HVAC system right outside my dining room, living room window is, I mean, it's really going to completely destroy, first of all, the value of our lives and the value of this apartment. Um, on top of that, the idea of having going up two floors and then having a roof deck, I mean, those people will be looking into my window. So I think that idea is, it's sort of unbelievable to me that that's actually legal. And I'd like to know, I mean, I'm happy, Sam, to email you directly, but I mean, I have many, many concerns and I agree that this isn't remotely clear as to how what you're, what you're suggesting actually impacts our building. Because I think that what you're suggesting will block so much light and like half of our windows. Yeah. The, um, uh, I, I'm confused when you say we're going up two floors and then having a roof deck. We're, the, the, the roof deck is going to be if in the section, the roof deck is at the uh, uh, right there at the fifth floor. I mean, I, I appreciate this presentation, but these pictures are not clear as to how it affects our building. So from what I'm seeing that you're showing us, like what is this doesn't really tell me much about what that means vis-a-vis -vis the two neighboring buildings. Yeah. Okay, well, I will, we'll, we will have to look at this. I mean, remember that we are, you know, we are, just building on our property. Of course, but you're building really, you're building up, which I'm really, sh I can't believe you're able to do in a landmarked area. I mean, it's really going to affect the lives of everybody in these two huge buildings that are on either side of it. The, the noise is gonna ricochet, it's gonna echo. I mean, it's gonna greatly, greatly detract from the value of the apartments in both of these buildings and from the people's quality of lives. I mean, that's a real issue. 
Yeah, we well, we actually we like to think that this is actually going to improve the value of your apartment, but so that's a uh, where experts disagree, I guess. Yep. All right, thank you. Um, and we have uh, another. We do. We have uh, Amanda. Go ahead, Amanda. Okay. Welcome. Um, yes. Hello. I'm a, also a resident in 465. Um, I just want to echo what the other tenants in my building have said um, that I question the appropriateness of the changes in the rear, um, certainly, and in the height. Um, the rear elevation in the back, I will say, you know, it, I, I also think it's inadequate that you haven't presented a view to, you know, the building on the south or the building on the north. But if you go back to the photograph of the yard in the back, I will say um, the if you're looking at uh, yes this one the if you see the wooden fence on the bottom and the brick shed and then there's sort of this what I'll call maybe concrete with the two doors the wooden wall there and the the brick shed that roof all the windows in the building now look right over that roof look across the entire property line of four seven one and into you know the back of the building on the north on 83rd so those two window lines where you can see the air conditioning unit that is our a-line apartment um so the two the two sets of windows that you see on the far right on four on the 465 building it sounds to me right now that they look across the, they certainly right now look across the entire lot of 471 and have the angle of also looking west. It sounds to me like the building, you know, based on the proposed building elevation, it looks like you will certainly block the first line of windows all along the A line and potentially the second line if you're going to build all the way out to the edge of that the shed you know that roof line on the brick shed are you intending to build all the way back to that yes okay so you are going to block two windows on the 465a line certainly and i look across to windows on the 83rd street building as well so i don't know the number of that building maybe 485 but they will also now look into brick walls. And this is a completely contiguous building with both of these larger buildings. There's no air shaft, there's no space, there's no light at all. Um, so I, I did also wanna echo the concerns about the appropriateness of the changes in the rear um, and how that was presented, I, I think requires some additions to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything, Mr. White? Or you will... No, I, th I think, you know, uh, I, I see their concern. I am astonished that the building at 465 in its original design felt that a that that amount of of uh, light and distance was appropriate and uh, uh, it's not, it's kind of, it's a 465 problem more than it's a 471 problem. Michelle and, and um, Kay, can I just clarify this? So those are not lot line windows. The 465 has a very, very small space between it and the, uh, those, those, lot, lot, those windows are not lot line windows. Is that right? They're a few feet away from the lot line with a little teeny space there. Uh, at 365 is 465 is that right like a small small alley you're saying sorry i don't know if i can unmute myself again can you, you still did. hear me yep. yes okay so that the wooden fence if you will um there's probably there's probably maybe six feet so mm -hmm. the 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 building um our um the basement um, has probably about six feet of space from that wooden fence there and a really um, a retaining wall that's in very difficult, very decrepit retaining wall that needs some attention. Um, 
that's behind that wooden fence, there's probably six feet to the four, six, five brick building on, on the right. Okay, so the, 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 the windows in 465 that face towards the backyard here, they are not lot line windows, is what I meant to ask. I think you've answered that. I'm not an architect. I don't, okay. They're not on the lot line. Okay. They Got are it. set back six well, feet. That, that would be probably. the definition. Yep. Yep, yep. yep. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, great. There's a very narrow, like you can see the windows that would be on West End, right? The yep. very deep red brick, and then there's kind of a lighter brick there and there's clearly windows you know so that window there is probably a, a three foot window right I mean so there's there is a window that is faces north that's the dining room of 465's a line mm -hmm. so okay and just so I'm clear um what we're looking at in the, the in the two different colors of brick uh including that little brick shed. That is all the property of uh, four, now I'm 471. That, that's correct. correct. Yes. Okay. okay, got it. I understand now. Interesting. Correct. That's all, that's 471. Yeah, got it. All righty. Uh, Michelle and Kate, we may have overlooked one in other. The back, right, in the rear, yeah, there's no Amanda. extension other than that brick you know, what I'm calling a shed, but it, it's got sort of the wooden roof on it. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, Kay, I, I'm sorry, Max, you were going to say something? Oh, yeah, we have another Can someone right? please no, share sure the email address not, again? But... Of We were supposed to email someone to invite them to look out our windows and improve this presentation in, in terms of how it was going to affect the building to the south and the north. What What is the email address? that we should be emailing to set that time up or will you just contact the super at 465 or the board? Well, Mr. White gave his email as swhite at pd, p, b, w, no. whoa. <laughs> it's very simple, isn't it? At uh, p, b, d, w. Uh, yeah, thank, yeah, thank peanut butter dishwasher. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and, okay. Okay. Should should we um, close the? Do we we don't we, we have, have one, one more, more person who wants to speak? one more from the public. That's Jen. And, yeah. and, and then we'll close the public session. And yep. Talk and then we're going to move on because yep. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, they may have just taken their hand down. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, so. Uh, yeah. All right. So thank you very much for um for all of that uh, input. We appreciate it. Um, okay, I do see a hand. Is that not true? So let's have a committee discussion. Yep. Okay, so um, I think, what should we do? Should we end the uh, screen share for now unless somebody needs to see something? Let's try it. We may need you to bring that back up, Kristen. So. Here we are. Okay, so let's uh, have a little chat. I think Madge uh, is gonna start us off. Well, it surprises me to see that the design, which I think is a wonderful design, but is so uninvolved with the people on either side of them that they haven't even checked these things out. And it's, it's such a major size change, building in the back the way they are, the whole height of the building, that I would like to see more conversation with the people on either side to see if, in fact, the light, the air, the noise are all going to be so intrusive. Okay, thank you, Mitch. Um, Clary? Yeah, so I'm sort of talking myself away from um, where I started out, surprisingly to me, started out, which was pretty favorable about this because I share the concerns that some of the neighbors have um, expressed and Madge's, what Madge just said, although I have not completely sorted out in my view how uh, how those concerns affect our charge on this project. Mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say is that um, this is so unusual. First of all, it's not a normal donut situation. Um, mm -hmm. We're normally very cognizant of what's happening in a donut where the longitudinally uh, on a, the cross streets where here because it's on West End Avenue, you have that very long space behind it. 
um, and um, you don't have the whole rest of the donut looking at the back. Um, for that reason, I was more um, receptive to a full height rear yard addition, which only last week we did not approve, I think. I think that's how that one sorted out. It did. Um, where we said Nick's on the fifth floor, um, where it faced uh, a donut and was different from um, the rest of typically what was typical in the donut. So, and the other thing that just throws me about this, but was making me rather receptive is that the original, um, the original facade is so gone <laughs> um, and um, the current facade is such crap that um, I'm more receptive to something that bears, pay some homage to the original design, but doesn't try to do a whole lot to look like it. Um, it's, it's long gone. Um, so, um, I, I, I had one more quick question, if I could, Sam, and that is are, are, for the copper uh, elements, are you gonna use pre-patinated copper that will show um, uh, basically turquoise from the start or it's gonna be a... Um, we, we, hadn't, we hadn't made a decision. I mean, it, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it uh, turns brown pretty quickly. In, well, it starts out brown, I mean, it turns, turns blue. It starts, excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Um, <laughs> It, it starts off pretty shiny and it turns brown very quickly. And then in five years, it turns green. But yeah, we could certainly blue, use a pre-patinated yeah. carpenter if, that, if uh -huh. that was your recommendation. I mean, personally, I would go for the pre-patinated. So you're right there with the blue-green to start yeah. with, which I think is more typical of what we see on our skylines here. So um, I guess I'm pretty receptive to this, but um, surprisingly to me, but... Um, because of what I've said, but I am concerned. These are not lot line windows. If they were lot line windows, then we we know, or I think we know those are not uh, zoning or building code conforming windows anyway. And if people managed to get, take have the advantage of them for many decades, they were lucky. Um, but the fact that there is a, a space of five or six feet in between 365, 465 and what would be this uh, addition? Twenty to go back a, another twenty feet full width is very, very big addition. I think very imposing, and does create those concerns. So I, I don't think there's any way we can avoid making a decision tonight. But I'd sure love to hear the more input from how this relates to the neighbors that you, you, the applicant here has been receptive to conversations. The applicant has been receptive to conducting, but hasn't conducted thus far. And um, you've, you've got a hearing coming up at LPC very soon. Okay, thank you, Clary. Um, Mark? Thanks. Um, it appears that, the, that there are no lot line windows being blocked, although from the dimensions of the proposal, I find that surprising um, and remarkable. So uh, I would like uh, before full board to understand that better um, mm -hmm. because it, 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 given the size of the, of the uh, addition on the rooftop, even though I applaud the, the scaling down of the fourth floor ceiling heights so that the whole thing is a little less um, visible and a little less obtrusive. Uh, those are all good things and, and show some deference to the neighbors, which I applaud. Um, lot line windows, you know, I mean, it is correct, as Clary said, that somebody was lucky, but they may have been lucky with those windows for 80 years. So an 80 year stroke of good luck somewhere along the line becomes the status quo. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm torn by that. I still think that um, if we want this building to be rescued, uh, something needs to be done. Ordinarily, this is where I say that it is a deal breaker for me to have a full height addition. Um, but the purpose of that is to make sure that there's a common plane with the townhouses on the left and the right, and they just ain't none here. So um, I am much more receptive to that. Um, although if it is that depth that compromises the experience of the rear yard, which is not light and air, but um, uh, or views rather, but but it is the sense of the rear yard that we as a board have traditionally paid some attention to, granted different than the front. Um, I would like us to, to continue to do that. 
Um, so, um, and, and I think the explanations about the front facade have been satisfactory. They may not be the choices I'd make, but they're certainly satisfactory. Um, and so on balance, I would be inclined to approve this um, if there are, if there is learning that needs to happen with respect to lot line windows or the impact on the rear yard. I'm, I'm eager to hear that from my colleagues, but otherwise I would vote to approve. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. All right, we're an hour and a half into this. Um, we have two other things that we really <laughs> need to get to. Um, so uh, I think maybe, uh, are we getting close to a resolution that we want to uh, come to uh, some understanding on? The only thing that I'm concerned about is that there are some very important physical conditions which will determine the outcome of our vote. And the only thing I would suggest is that um, our statement be conditional on verification of certain aspects because it may change. Um, I think the project that is admirable, there's a lot of good things about it, but I think given the proximity, we're not talking here just simply overlooking into somebody's backyard or a window, but the window being actually on somebody on the new roof. And, and it's very rare. So um, I don't, I leave it to you guys to um, figure out the, the language. Um, but I think we need an escape hatch on this one, just to protect the existing um, architecture of the, the taller buildings. Oddly enough, normally we always side with the small guy, but this one, it's the big guys too. Okay, yes, thank you, Paige. I, I think you're, you're exactly right. Um, that said, is anybody brave enough to try a, uh, a resolution, uh, at least in, in broad strokes? Uh, that would... Uh, raise this consideration, but um, I, I hear us, I, maybe I'm wrong, I hear us uh, basically being a, a approving of this, uh, of this proposal, this project, because of the, the change that'll make it what's become kind of an eyesore in the neighborhood. Um, so if I were to jump in on that, I would um, propose a resolution to approve as presented, conditioned on the rear addition, not interfering with the rear yard windows of the neighboring buildings on either side. Uh, that's just the first first tr first crack at it. Okay, thank you, Mark. I think it that's would, what we want to say. Uh, Peter, what you got? Yeah, it would be helpful. Um, I think we're missing a little bit of the um, uh, information on the rear yard and how it, um, I mean, we, we saw photos of the of the rear, but we didn't see very much in terms of the uh, plans uh, of how the addition uh, affects either building on either side. Um, so uh, I'm uh, pretty much in favor of what has been presented with the exception that we're, we seem to be missing a little bit. So I, I would uh, go along with a resolution to approve pending getting some other information on that. Right, thank you, Peter. And Jay? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much all my questions have been answered. Um, <clears throat> and I, just an observation, I, I, I agree that uh, this is uh, very much a positive uh, development on this building, uh, which has been an eyesore. Uh, I would just observe that I'm a little uncomfortable with um, with the language of uh, saying that uh, that we would approve it uh, unless it interferes uh, with windows. Uh, I, I I'm not sure the uh, the phrase uh, or the use of the term interferes. It, <laughs> is is definitive enough i mean almost every one of these projects uh affects uh somebody in the proximity uh uh and you know we've said on many occasions over the years that while we're sympathetic to some negative effects on light and air that's 
really not our uh, purview since that's typical of virtually every project of this ilk that uh, that we review and um, you know it's kind of always unfortunate uh, and even things like uh, mechanicals on the roof and uh, you know it's unfortunately sometimes a fact of city life uh, that these things uh, have an effect and you know when we know where the mechanicals are going to be and and what type they are and we've we've asked uh, applicants to create baffles and enclosures and so forth and we rely on the good faith uh, of the developers of these projects to do whatever they can to mitigate uh, the effects. And, you know, I, I think we can presume that that'll be the case here. I'm just, I understand the concerns, but I'm a little uncomfortable with imposing a condition that's not quite capable of definition. Yeah, I understand. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Um... All right, we're going to have to move along, uh, right, Michelle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would, Jay, would you be happy if we uh, approved? And I don't know if we can even make this con a condition, but condition upon further conversation with the tenants on each side of the of the applicant's building. Um, and just sounds leave like, it like that. Sounds like a recommendation, right? <clears throat> Because I agree with you, we can't, can't. I don't like the word interfering, because it's it's a very vague word. I, Can we do I, a, I, approval? I I I think that number one, I uh, I think it's very positive that Mr. White, um, and that always reminds me of Breaking Bad, but <laughs> um, but that Mr. White. Um, you know, is receptive to talking further with with mm -hmm. the neighbors and even observing the conditions uh, that he's talking about. And we do have we do have a gap between the committee meeting and the full board meeting. And perhaps with you know with the aid of the office and 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 the applicants, we can gather a little bit more information between now and then. Uh, but um, Michelle, I, I, I'm just, I can't come up with language that, you know, eliminates the concern of, of using vague, vague yeah. terminology when we don't know exactly. Yeah, you're right. What the situation is. I, my, my preference would be, I think, overall, we're all favorably inclined towards this project for the reasons that several of my colleagues have stated, and I would, I would say that we can approve it um, and gather some more information between now and full board. Approving at a committee doesn't bind us True. Uh, in terms of how we ultimately present this to full board, and True. you know, and how we treat it at full board. So, I think we should approve it. That would be my my preference, unless. Somebody can come up with some language that assuages uh, uh, my concerns about the vagueness. I, I I guess I agree with with Jay, but I would like uh, some assurance from Mr. White that you know that uh, you could get back to us after conversations with uh, the, the folks that we've heard from tonight, and and perhaps others who will be impacted by the rear yard addition. I I, I agree with my colleagues at the uh, hooray for the uh, front facade. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Carpenter, I, I, what I think we would have to do is um, we need to make a sort of a, some drawings showing <clears throat> sort of an overlaying our proposed addition against the existing elevations, and then we need to meet with each building and the, or the tenants in each building who care about it uh, and explain it to them. I can't guarantee that we're going to make them happy, but at least we can make them we can make it clear of what our plan is to do and so that they can't say that a we didn't meet with them and b we didn't make it clear yeah, yeah. 
And of course, anyone is welcome to attend the uh, both our full board meeting, but more importantly, uh, the presentation at, at Landmarks. So. But I, I, uh, we could we could pull that together over the course of the next two weeks. Yeah, that would, be, that would be helpful. And if we can get some kind of report back to the committee um, with the results of that, whatever they may be, uh, and whatever supporting documentation. It, it could be my head on a pole. Well, um, Sam, if you're... Um, yeah, as long as the, that, it doesn't block anyone's windows. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Paige? Uh, yeah, just as long as, um, since you're um, volunteering to to take the study um, to the next level, could you also um, uh, place the, the the scale and or the size and the placement of mechanical equipment both on the roof and possibly in the backyard? Because yes. I think that that goes parcel parcel mm -hmm. with um, making good neighbors. Yeah. Um, so we're we're meeting with the mechanical engineer tomorrow. Or okay, good. great, great. So, so why don't I amend, amend the resolution to be a straight approval with the understanding by Mr. White that if there uh, if we don't receive those drawings or if they say something different than we expect, then several of the committee members may very well change their vote at full board. But yeah, uh, we, for the time we, being, we we are on record as approving what we've heard so far. Does that yeah. sound right to my colleagues? Yeah, I think we're ready to go with that. Thank you. Yes. Um, right. Michelle, would you take the uh, take a vote? Sure. I think we're ready to vote. Mark, sure. you can, you can yeah. I assume, just refine that language into a, a resolution. Well, right now it's a straight <laughs> approval. Right now it's a straight approval. If, if we have to, we have to, if we have to. Oh, mess okay. Up. I thought you were adding additional. That's fine. No, I'm taking away. I'm not adding. No, that's good. All right, so okay. Peter, what's your vote on this application? I vote yay. Madge? Yes. Clary? Yes. Paige? Yes, with conditions. Yes. Well, we don't have conditions. Oh, no, we, we can't have them here? Okay, yes. Mark? Yes. Uh, Jay? Yes. And I'm a yes, and Kay? Yes. All right, so uh, one. How many was that? Or five, six, seven, eight, zero, zero, zero. And there are no uh, in to approve the application as presented to the committee. Um, we'll hear from you all before the full board meeting. Uh, but um, and there are there are no non committee board members here, Max. I don't see anybody. Oh, it took me a minute to unmute. Um, Did no. someone look at milk curtains? Okay. Okay. All right. So the uh, resolution passes. The application at the committee is approved. We look forward to continuing conversation with you and the neighbors. Uh, and uh, your LPC meeting, so far as you know, is December 13th. 13th. And our full board meeting is uh, Tuesday, December 6th. Right. All right. Great. Thank you very Great. much. Thank you very much. Kristen, we have some work to do. Okay. <laughs> Indeed. Thank All you, right. Sir. We'll oh. see you. We'll see you then. <laughs> All right, sorry, uh, not sorry. I mean, that was a very helpful uh, conversation and decision. So um, we're gonna move uh, back to, um, what are we up to, 520? 520, uh, West yeah. Avenue. yeah. 520. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for, for waiting. Uh, are we ready to move ahead on that? Yeah, yep, okay. I was ready an hour and a half ago. But... I'm sure you were, okay. <laughs> it was a problem. <laughs> So that was a hard act to follow now. Okay, um, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, can I have your you name, please, screen? for the record? Sorry. I'm sorry, say again? Can I have your name for your, the record? Um, Adrian R. Figueroa. I am architect for um, 520 uh, West End Avenue. Um, ownership. And this is about the... Um, uh, trash enclosures in the rear of the building on West 85th Street. Thank you. So Great. this is this is the building. It's a landmark building, in the individually landmarked. 
Um, it's do you an normally individual go through all the sides or just go straight to since there's since we're already at almost eight thirty. Did you say it's an individual landmark? It is in a landmark yeah. district. In a district, in, but it's also yes. so a landmark landmark. building in a landmark district. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, just some historical, let me just give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm presenting to DOT for um, this and it's part, also part of um, LPC. I received um, DOT um, approval about two, three weeks ago. And I believe some of, of your uh, members were a part of that. Um, and the uh, building received two violations, um, one in 1999, the other one in 2000, and I believe two or four. And the person, the executor on the, um, my client um, was made aware of those violations um, just recently, about four or five months ago. Um, and, and so hence we are here. Um, so in the original violation, it called for wooden um, enclosures to be removed, which is the slides here. So um, they were removed, by, this is dating back to 84 and they were changed to metals and we believe they were changed to metal right here, also in the end of 84. And I have a couple of pictures. So these, I'm just gonna to skip to, so these are um, as they currently exist, metal enclosures. Um, and again, they, they protrude onto the sidewalk about two feet, about a foot and 10 inches is on our property. Um, but the other two is an encroachment. You can see another shot here. Um, right is now. An, is it an encroachment onto the neighboring property? No, just onto the city. The sidewalk? Property. Onto the sidewalk, correct. So here is, I'll, I'll move you guys out. So, um, the um, those is right in here. Um, so that's if you can see it. So you can see um, this is a survey that we had done for um, this property, and um, hmm, we took out the the words that it, that it was. Um, I'll erase my how far away it is, but I believe it's um, one feet 10. Okay. And here is on plan where the property line is and where our, our, our uh, metal enclosures are and where it is. So it's exactly one feet 10 onto the property. And I'm sorry, it's 11 inches in our property. So the encroachment is one feet 10. I had it backwards. Okay. And that's more. I could show you more pictures. And here is um, drawings of that. Um, here is a side out side section that shows where it is. And then here it's a front on review of it. And that is it. Um, it are there any slides that um, you want to see? that it went through too fast? Well, um, we have a few different questions, but how will uh, will the proposed, um, will the proposed bins uh, look much different from what's there right now? No, they'll be the same exact ones. It's to legalize, isn't it? It's to legalize? Correct. To legalize. Oh, okay, all no, right, no, sorry. No, 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 no. You want to keep it there, but legalize it, is that it? Correct, correct. correct. Okay. I, well, that's, no, no. <laughs> if I may, Kay. Yeah, Jay, you're up. Well, I mean, there are two issues here. There's the encroachment, which um, we've already reviewed at the Transportation Committee yeah. and full board, and we've approved it. Yeah. Uh, so that takes care of the 
uh, encroachment. Right. Uh, now, the question before this committee is, uh, so they are now legal in terms of where they are, uh, but it's up to us to make a recommendation to landmarks now as to their appearance. The appearance, correct. Appropriateness. Yeah. Right. So they're legal. We don't uh, we don't have to legalize their placement. We just have to now rule on the appropriateness. Yes. There you go. Um, OK, thanks, Jay. Uh, Michelle, did your hands up. Yeah. Um, why can't you put these in the yard behind the fence? Um, there's a school there. Oh, that's and not the your school uses the um, yard. Oh, that yard behind there, the school uses. Yes. There's a daycare. Mm. In your building? Yes. Okay. And how do uh, they Clark? get into the yard? Do they have to come out of their building and through that um, door? They have a separate entrance on West End Avenue. Mm -hmm. And they, they occupy, um, let's call it the basement level. And from the basement level, they go into the rear yard. And this door there is for emergency egress. Ah. You have to have that. Right. Okay. Um, Clary? Yeah, two things bother me about this, um, although I want to hear what everybody has to say. When I went by today on that door, that emergency door, there was a notice posted. It's the only yes. one I saw. Um, it correctly said the building was 520, uh, or 5, 580, is it? Um, or 520 um, well, West End yeah. Avenue. But the description of the work that was being asked for was the description applicable to 471 West End, which we just heard. So I don't know who printed the notice or how that came about. I don't know in general who prints notices. Um, but um, so nobody who saw that notice or presumably any other one that was posted would know that this was about the design of garbage bins and not about something that made no sense at all because it was a different building. So the notice thing bothers me. The other thing that bothers me is while we are constrained, I believe, by the rule that when we look to whether we are recommend legalizing something, we should apply the same standard as we would and LPC would if it were an application in the first instance to place something um, uh, to, to get permission before they were put there and not a legalization situation. So it, it, assuming it's the same standard, um, this is a very distinguished building. It's a mansion, it's on a corner. It's, I am told, we are told tonight an individual landmark while these three metal bins are way, way better looking than those um, wooden things that were removed uh, some time ago, um, I'm not sure they come up to a standard that meets what we might think appropriate to a, a building as distinguished as this. Have you guys looked into, I mean, I know what you're trying to do is spend no money and, and legalize what you've got there. So you're not designing something new, but have you looked into um, whether some alternative metal bins might be um, a little less utilitarian looking? Um, no, we have not. Okay. Um, the other part of my comment on that is, I, I, as we see so many of these garbage can things all along our brownstones, et cetera, I find myself wondering, what did people do with their garbage 100 years ago, 120 years ago, 130 years ago when these, when these buildings were built? Um, presumably people created as much garbage. Um, I would love to get a handle on what happened to it then. Um, well, um, I know the um, neighbors have complained. There's your um, the Actually, tenants have complained that they don't have enough space for their garbage and they wanted more um, space. And, um, and um, right now they get filled up and they get removed every three times a week. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm trying to find a, a, a posting that I posted because I personally posted them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said and earlier that a lot of them disappeared. I wanted so to make sure that they were there. Well, but but the, what one, concerned two, me is they're not describing the correct project. They're describing a different project. Well, uh, this is what was given to me. Yeah, uh, so Clary, it says here, the notices come from the office. 
Oh, Correct. okay. So it was our so office there. Yeah. It's a mistake on our on our our. Okay. Account. Yeah. So it has the it has the correct address. Right. And it says application to Landmark Preservation Commission for its appropriateness yeah. for the front and re Oh, that's your yeah. You memory. see, and you want me to just look? You just put it. Up. Okay. Never mind the notice for the moment, although that is a bit okay. of a concern. Do you have a better close up of what these existing things look like? Because as I said, my concern is they're. I don't think they rise to the standard of what I would like to see for a building that's distinguished. Um, well, we could look into that. And well, here's, here's the photo. Find, yeah. Yeah, this is the photo of it. We'll try to make it as big as possible. Hey, don't you all in transportation have some sort of a, a model of rat rat preventing garbage cans no no i think the other thing that you guys are talking about as well is maintenance because with the rat problem we have and the, and the fact that the rats can get into these things because they can jump and whatever um the bags get shredded inside and they start to smell and they so there has to be, I, I would think, a better um, arrangement where you can actually wash or hose down after um, two or three. Um, you say it's three collections a week um, yeah. at the end of each week. Um, somebody has to take the responsibility to um, to clean it out and hose it down um, and. I don't know how you do that. I know that the front doors open. I've seen them in other places, um, immaculately maintained a few on the east side in Carnegie Hill for schools. Um, they have them, but um, they they are maintained. And, and I think the requirement, if it's possible, Jay, you're the guy who knows what we can get away with. But I think this is a cleanliness and health matter to keep these um, types of enclosures, particularly in the summer, um, clean. Yeah, Ag agreed, although that may be outside of our purview. Yeah. It doesn't matter, it's a health issue if we are mm -hmm. approving something that doesn't work and, and creates a nuisance and a deterrent I, for quiet enjoyment. I don't know if the city imposes standards on these enclosures, um, but certainly, you know, uh, they have to be fully enclosed. They have to be metal. And I think to your concern, um, Paige, you know, since these doors do open and stuff, uh, I assume they're cleaned periodically so that, you know, to the extent possible, uh, the odors uh, are controlled. But as long as I'm, <clears throat> as long as I'm talking, if, if it can be my turn. Um, uh, you got it. <clears throat> actually, I, I agree with Clary. I mean, I walked uh, I walked by there today and, uh, you know, with the, uh, uh, with the extent to which they encroach on the sidewalk, it, I don't think that's an issue because of the recess uh, and so forth. And that's, that's, uh, been legalized by DOT, but I agree. I mean, a building, uh, you know, even if it wasn't an individual landmark, but within the historic district, I mean, sitting there in full view on the on the sidewalk, it's, I mean, in simple terms, it's unsightly. Uh, and I wonder if, if in, in addition to maybe considering some other kind of design of the bins, uh, there is some way since there, since it is recess and it doesn't extend as far as the uh, knee wall uh, to the left as you look at it with shrubbery and so forth, if there's some way to um, create some sort of enclosure of the uh, the enclosures, if you will, uh, something, some sort of wrought iron, or you know, some some 
something that uh, keeps the bins accessible, but has some aesthetic value. More decorative, you know. Um, I okay. think, I, look, I'm not an architect or a designer, but it seems to me the only issue to doing something like that would be to do it in a way that allows access to the bins, perhaps wrought iron gates or or something that that is not just metal garbage bins sitting in the middle of si sidewalk adjacent to an individual landmark in a historic district. So I yeah. I I I mean in very simple terms and according to our standards, I just think they're inappropriate. Okay. The thank question you. The question also is, if you don't have solid panels that are rat proof, the bags um, of garbage, clear, blue, green, black, tied, untied, or just people's sandwiches thrown in there, oh, well, uh, yeah. you, you need to have, you have a better to be way solid. to ma maintain them so they don't look like this. So Hey, let's, um, let's this, go through the, the order. These bars that we... open up. Yes. Um, that's one. Second is there are trash receptacles inside the bins. Right. So um, there, it's not just trash that's um, tossed in there. There are um, bins in there, um, plastic bins. So when um, trash is collected, they roll out those, those trash bins to the curb. Yes, but you still get garbage juice. What's, agree. Um, I agree. It's gross. Um, I totally agree every, with that. Every, every block has it. Yes, I know that. Time. So I think part of this is a maintenance program that keeps these <laughs> pristine. I can recommend to the landlord to um, hose down the, um, um, the bins um, weekly or, or every other week depending on um, the odors as necessary. Um, they are metal, so, and they are painted. Um, and they could probably take the, the, the weather. We gotta make sure they're, I believe they are painted inside. We will probably have to have a maintenance program to paint them yearly because the water will <coughs> um, deteriorate them. And, and then it'll become very unsightly. Yeah, that's, okay. that, that's I'm going to, Jay, I'm going to, I'm going to move us along with your permission. Uh, or yeah, it. it's just that um, that's, maintenance is not our issue. Our yeah, issue correct. is exactly. So let's go to Mark. Thanks. Um, a lot's already been said, so I'll, I'll offer this. The maintenance, by the way, is a complaint-driven system to the Department of Sanitation. It's got nothing to do with LPC or DOT, as a matter of fact. Um, and unfortunately, that's, that's your remedy. They do issue violations. That's how that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't see us conditioning a resolution um, on a future maintenance program that that just doesn't seem to fit with what we're trying to do here. Um, I, uh, I think part of the problem is that these things are usually half or fully submerged in an area way. And so even though these things are ubiquitous, we don't see them in their full glory as we do here. Um, but they are ubiquitous. And, uh, and, and I, while I appreciate, I appreciate the effort to try to make them in some way agree with the beauty of the building behind and to the left, I don't want to call attention to these things. Mm. Ubiquitous almost is better in my view in this situation. So while they could sure use a coat of paint here, um, uh, I don't know that I want to embellish or decorate them too much um, because then they become a thing unto themselves instead of the necessary add-on um, to, to, to a landmark building. That's my thoughts. I would be willing to approve this, pardon the pun, with my, you know, holding my nose. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, Michelle? You're muted, Michelle. I think we lost you. Michelle? Sorry, I'd be willing to approve this. Also, I can't. Be, I I would not believe that the uh, that the super wouldn't want to keep things as clean as he or she could, and 
and perhaps the technology will get better in the future and we'll be able to prevent rat infestation. Um, and that's all I have to say about this. I would approve it. Okay, has, has anybody, um, anybody else not spoken or asked or? Yeah, have we gone to the community? I don't actually see anyone right now from the community. Okay. All right, I, I guess I would urge us to, to move to a, a, a vote because we have an important uh, item that uh, still remains and the hour draws on. Um, I guess for my two cents, uh, I go, I walk by there every day because I live around the corner. I, um, I never have smelled anything or to tell you the truth before today, I never really noticed them. Uh, although I, I, I look at that building admiringly every time I walk past. So I guess uh, for my part, I would be inclined to, to approve. All right, so shall we uh, offer a uh, resolution to approve as uh, presented? Yes. And I'll take the vote, Peter? Yes, approved. Madge, is she still here? Yes. Approved. Oh, okay, thanks. Clary? No. Mark? Yes. Paige? No. Jay? No. Uh, I'm a yes, and Kay, you said? I'm a yes. Okay, so I don't think there's any- uh, can, I, can I change to a no? Can I change to a no, it's Madge? Thank okay. you. Sure. So what's the vote? It's close. Yeah, the vote is one, two, three, four in favor and four opposed. So it doesn't uh, pass. Zero, zero, so the, it does not pass. The resolution does not pass. So if we turned it around, We'd be spending a couple minutes and probably get the same four to four in the other direction. <laughs> well, yeah. Not necessarily. Why don't you give it a try? All right. I think we have to give it a try. Yeah. So the resolution now is to disapprove the application. Right. As I would in general say, as inappropriate to the historic character, et cetera. Got yeah. it. And Clary, would it be fair to say that because of its utilitarian um, uh, dissonance with the uh, ornate nature of the building or something like that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of shorthand, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I would phrase it differently in a way that doesn't help us, which is they could do better. Um, okay, well then um, I'd be willing to uh, vote yes on that if, um, uh, if that would help move this along. Okay, so this is a resolution to disapprove as inappropriate to the historical ca character. And we'll find the words that say, and they should go back to the drawing board on this? Yeah, something, something. Like that, yeah. Okay, um, so we'll go, uh, Peter. What's your vote now? Um, no. <laughs> yes. Madge, yes. Yes. Clary? Yes. Mark? Yes. Page? Yes. Jay? Yes. And I'm a no. And K? Oh, I don't know. I'll abstain. <laughs> uh, right I never right. get to do that. So. so the vote is one, two, three, four, five to disapprove. Uh, two, uh, five in favor of a disapproval, two opposed, one abstention and zero abstentions for with cause. So the motion to disapprove passes. Great. Mm -hmm. Next case. Okay. And does this go to landmarks on a particular date? No. Okay. All right, so maybe there's a chance to uh, rework things a little bit and make us happy. Um, we'll so try. let us know. But yeah, I, so I, I've seen other enclosures, not as, not as um, nice as this, but I'll scour the earth to figure out something <laughs> nicer there that's appropriate I mean, for a building that was built that didn't have garbage enclosures. I, you know, think yeah. about doing something around the around the enclosures if possible. Just just a suggestion. I could add to that, but that enclosure there that you're looking at when it was built was over ten thousand dollars, and that's just metal. Yep, I got yeah, you. No, I believe it. Having believe done it. something similar. Yeah. All you right. Need, so, you need there. brass handles and brass doorknobs. 
Ooh, fancy. Ooh, that'll be that'll be interesting. They probably won't last more than a month, but I know. Okay. All right. Thank we you very much. Thank okay, you. thanks for coming. Sorry about Bye -bye. that. Uh, take care, and uh, that uh, Michelle, take it away. Okay, so we have our final application three forty dash three forty four West Seventy Second Street, and who is here for that application? I see one. I can promote you. This is an application for the uh, Chatworth Apartments and Annex on Riverside Boulevard in West End Avenue at 72nd. Uh, this is for a renewal and a revision of a prior certificate of appropriateness for A, window replacements and restoration of Presting and Cornice elements at both the main and annex buildings constituting the Chatworth. B, construction of rooftop ele elements, pergolas, privacy screens, et cetera. And C, construction and expansion, expansion of an existing rooftop addition. It, first, the, the question, is there a an LPC date? Let me just get that. Good evening. Hi, I'm nice. Cass Stackelberg from Higgins, Quays, Barth and Partners. Um, yeah, we are calendared for the December 16th public hearing. Okay. Um, I might also ask um, if you can promote uh, Richard DeMarco and Jason Jones um, sure. to panelists so they can uh, answer questions with me at the end of the presentation. I see Richard and then Jason is the other one. Oh, I see. Yes. Terrific. I think you mean the uh, December 13th. Is that possible? Did I say 16? Yes. Sorry. December 6th and December 13th. Yes. The 13th. Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know if yes. LPC was going to start Thanks. meeting on Friday. So <laughs> Special a, a couple of, uh, of folks on the committee have uh, um, seen what you will potentially be doing. And if I may say, and I asked Clary to help me with this application and Madge, because it's Clary and Madge, um, we think you're looking for a, an approval, a renewal of, of an approval you got in 2013-ish. You want to revise some of those things you got approval for, <laughs> and you want to put new have an app part of your application is to install new uh, to make new changes mm -hmm. to the building and the annex generally yes and I, I i'm hoping that our presentation sort of touches on all those things and is clear enough so you'll understand those elements that we are basically looking for a new certificate of appropriateness for based on the previous approval and then a handful of small items uh that have been added uh to the scope um so um I, if, that, if that's a, a pretty good place to start, I think the presentation uh, should hopefully address uh, all of those different issues if, if we've done our job properly. Um, okay, so I, with I have, that- I'm sorry, I've, to, I've told the committee members they can, uh, while you're making your presentation, ask questions then. Uh, I don't know if there's any members of the public here. There might be a couple, right? There are a lot of attendees still. Okay. There are. There I don't are see anyone with their hands up. But if uh, anyone would like to speak from the public, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, but not First, now. First, the application. The applicant will make their presentation. The uh, committee members will ask questions. Then we'll allow the uh, community to to ask questions. Then the committee will discuss how we're going to formulate a resolution on this application. Terrific. And vote. That on sounds that. great. All right. Sure. Okay, so we're ready. Great. So, great. Before I share this, I'll just introduce um, Richard DeMarco from Montreux Anderson DeMarco Architects, um, and our colleague Jason Jones from Starwood Property Trust. Uh, I'm going to go through the presentation, and uh, Richard, uh, Jason, and I are obviously available to answer any questions um, from you and, and and the public as well. So let me go ahead and pull <clears throat> pull up the presentation, um, and uh, and begin with just. Um, a little bit of a sort of a history background to sort of catch everybody up uh, because you saw this application back, I believe it was December of 2013, um, which feels like it was uh, eons ago. Um, at that time, um, our office, Higgins Quaysbarth, was involved in the project uh, as was Richard's office, Richard DeMarco. Um, and we were working with um, HFZ at the time. Uh, at the uh, December meeting, uh, the proposal um, had 
different elements uh, than ultimately what was approved uh, and constructed. Um, but just a little bit of a, a timeline so that you sort of have the context of that. Um, the application came to you uh, December 2013. Uh, there was a public hearing in January 2014 and then a public meeting in March 2014 where revisions were presented and approved by the commission. Uh, a certificate of actually two separate certificates of appropriateness were uh, prepared and issued by landmarks, one for the Chatsworth and one for the annex. Uh, that was issued in 2015. Um, work stopped around 2019, 2020. Uh, HFZ subsequently went bankrupt. Uh, and the permits, uh, the C of A permits expired in March of 2020. Um, so we are here, as, as you noted at the outset, we are here to basically not necessarily renew those permits because those have expired. So we are reapplying uh, and we are um, hoping to obtain new certificates of appropriateness for both the Chatsworth uh, and the Annex. Um, and um, with that, I think I'll just sort of jump right in. So um, I think you all know uh, the building, uh, the Chatsworth here uh, on the right and the Annex uh, on the left. Uh, at the south side of 72nd Street on the, on the west end uh, of the block with Riverside Park, obviously, directly to the north. The buildings themselves were listed individually as landmarks in 1984 and included in the West End Collegiate uh, Historic District Extension in, excuse me, in 2013. Um, so you know, we consider them really individual landmarks and not so much buildings in, in, in a district, although they have that sort of dual, dual designation. Um, a, a quick overview um, on the left, uh, obviously the annex here in the Chatsworth, this is the uh, approved elevation that was included in the certificate of appropriateness that was issued in 2015, approved at the public meeting in 2014. And then on the right is what we are proposing. Um, I'm gonna, in this presentation, I'm gonna just first address the Chatsworth uh, and talk about the, the updates and, and proposed work there, and then, then do the same for the annex. And just as a, as a summary, um, what I'll do here is just illustrate and describe for you the, the, the work at the Chatsworth that's uh, part of this application. Um, and, and I'll just say really all the work that we're proposing uh, is up at the roof of both buildings. So here at the Chatsworth, um, these six uh, large windows in the, in the mansard we're uh, proposing to uh, introduce two operable lights in each of the windows. There, there was an approval for one, but there's a need for additional light and air in those units. So uh, we're, we're modifying the upper portion of those windows. Um, this, this addition here on the Chatsworth is constructed. Um, we are modifying the railing uh, to make it actually less dense than what was approved on the roof. That has not been built, but we're coming back to modify that. Um, there's a pergola proposed in front of that addition, um, which you can see here, and a privacy screen here uh, in front of mechanical equipment and an elevator bulkhead. Um, so that is the extent of that. And then, of course, the, perhaps one of the most important aspects of the project is restoring um, the copper chenot and finials across the, the top edge of the um, of the uh, of the mansard roof that uh, was approved. It hasn't yet been built, but it is part of this application. So that's the scope at the Chatsworth. And then looking at the annex. So again, looking at the approved here at the annex, there was a rooftop addition that was approved. It was full width across the the, the width of the building itself, with uh, with a picket four inch on center picket uh, railing. What we're proposing is a uh, narrower and slightly smaller rooftop addition. Um, so the, the notice actually wasn't quite right. I think it was describing an expansion of that addition. It's actually a small reduction. It's about a 60 square foot reduction in footprint, but it's also set back further than the approved addition. So uh, a, smaller, uh, a smaller addition, an open pipe rail at the roof, and then another privacy screen here uh, shown in blue at the base of the, uh, the water tank. So that's the sort of big picture summary, and I'll go into greater detail as we proceed through the presentation. Uh, a few historic photographs that have been really instrumental in the restorative components of the project, uh, and of course uh, are, are helping us in terms of the detailing of uh, the Chenot and the finials um, and the, the really robust cornice that was historically up on the top of the uh, annex and will be will be restored. So these high resolution photographs have been very very helpful to the to the team as as those details are prepared. 
Um, uh, just a, a few photographs illustrating some of the work that's been completed to date. This is up on the roof of the Chatsworth. This is this uh, one story setback um, addition. Uh, it's been constructed. Uh, the um, prepatinated copper cladding uh, still needs to be applied onto it. Uh, and then one of the pergolas will sit sort of right in front of this element um, in, and extend from, okay. from this onto the roof. Uh, this is the uh, the back of the um, uh, of the roof at the at the Chatsworth. Um, so this this volume here is the back of this volume, and so most of this work is constructed. The railings around the roof have not yet been built, um, and and uh, on the upper roof. So that's part of the uh, the ongoing construction. And then just some photographs: the the main portion of the annex and the main portion of uh, the Chatsworth illustrating the window work that's been done to date. Um, new wood windows were installed on the lower three floors of both buildings and aluminum windows uh, on, the, um, on the upper floors. I should mention the scope of work also includes uh, replacing the windows on the upper floor of the annex, which I'll touch on um, in just a moment. Um, so beginning sort of specifically with the Chatsworth on the left is the approved addition, uh, sorry, the approved elevation um, with the, the penthouse here uh, the four inch on center picket uh, railing on the roof of that penthouse, uh, the cresting and the operable windows. This is the current uh, elevation as it exists today. And then the, the proposed elevation. One thing I'll point out um, that is also a real positive, I think for the project, um, these windows here um, down at the base of the building were approved to have um, to be modified to allow for entries onto the ground floor. That work was not done and instead those wood windows were restored. So that's been eliminated from the approved scope. Um, so at the center is the current elevation. Um, on the right is the uh, proposed elevation, which I just took you through. So operable, uh, operable lights up at the top of these windows. Uh, a pergola in front of the constructed addition, an open pipe railing on the roof of that, uh, and a screen uh, in front of uh, some equipment up on, on the upper roof. Uh, a floor plan at the 13th floor here in, uh, in green, if it comes up in your screen, in that color, sort of a beigey green, uh, are the approved additions. Uh, on the right in blue are the new elements. There's a, a pergola off the back of the, uh, the, the, the roof, um, which, um, there is a slight visibility from 71st Street of, that's an open pergola, and a stair here, this is a new element here, um, that extends up to this upper roof. So this stair and then the pergola that I mentioned um, extending off of this approved, um, this approved penthouse. So um, there are no expansions of rooftop additions here at the Chotsworth. There's a, a pergola here and on this low roof, and then a screen wall around the skylight, the bulkhead, uh, and the water tower. Um, turning to the elevation, so on the top is what was approved, in the middle is the current elevation, and on the bottom is the proposed. So again, uh, making uh, these upper lights of the windows operable, introducing an open metal screen to, to mask the elevator bulkhead and some other low equipment in the base of the water tank, uh, constructing a pergola, um, obviously below the height of the, uh, the existing uh, penthouse, and then modifying the approved railing, which you can see here is this sort of dense four inch on center picket railing to just an open, simple pipe railing. So a little bit less density up at that upper level. Um, a few details, um, these, these were, were previously approved as part of the restorative scope, but I just show them again, because I think it's a really exciting opportunity and, and really uh, a really fantastic asset that will be, you know, part of the project and of course return to the top of the building. So the copper chenot in pre-patinated copper and these decorative finials all derive from that uh, terrific historic photograph. Um, a couple detailed photograph, uh, excuse me, detailed drawings illustrating the, the simple pipe railing, three foot six um, at a code compliant height, same height as the other, but it's a much more open uh, railing than what was approved previously. So it's the same detailing, up at the roof of the penthouse on the Chatsworth as what's being proposed. Uh, and you'll see it in a few slides of the roof of the annex, swapping out that four inch on center picket uh, railing for uh, an open pipe railing. Uh, side elevation of the, uh, of the Chatsworth again. So looking at uh, the approved, the current elevation and the proposed showing the screening and um, pergola and the pipe railing. Uh, flipping around, looking at the, the west elevation, again, uh, approved, existing, and proposed. 
Um, one other element I'll just point out is the, the chimney. There's a, a tall boiler uh, chimney. Uh, it is at its original height right now, but it needs to be raised. Uh, the previous approval had, uh, had it being constructed in brick. Um, and for both structural reasons and also just maintenance reasons, we are proposing to actually do it in a painted metal cladding. Um, it'll be much easier to maintain that way, and it will be much, obviously, much lighter than constructing that uh, in brick. Um, we do not believe that this is visible, uh, but we bring it up as part of the overall scope of the project. Um, and then this is the rear elevation, so the south elevation of the of the Chatsworth. This is the sort of northern portion. Um, so again, the, the existing elevation on the top and the proposed elevation on the back, you can see the, the, the raised chimney, uh, the back of the, the screen up on the upper roof, uh, that stair that I mentioned, and then there's a uh, pergola off the back um, of, the, of the approved and, and constructed addition here, just an open, open pergola. Um, just addressing the, the window, so hopefully you can see this, and maybe what I'll do is zoom in on this photograph just to make sure you can. So this is a, a photograph from, um, I think, the 1940s that shows one of these uh, window panels in this uh, upper sash actually is being operable. So we know historically these windows uh, at the mansard were operable. Um, and again, the approval previously had the center light in each bay as being an operable um, in-swing awning. Um, and um, is that right, Richard, in-swing or out-swing? I think actually it's outswing. They are outswing. I, I okay, wasn't... sorry. So it's, it's an outswing awning operation. So because the size of the rooms behind these windows has changed, we need more daylight. Uh, sorry, more fresh air. Um, so we're now showing these outer uh, lights as being operable as well. Um, so some section de uh, section details illustrating those and then a detail sheet. So this is the uh, existing condition where the center light is operable. And we just need the, the three individual lights across the top uh, being operable. So the, the Munton dimensions here, um, which uh, allow for just one operable light, were three and a quarter inches. They'll need to go to four and three eighths to allow for uh, operability on both sides of the framing. Uh, and then some additional section details here. Um, uh, continuing on looking at some of the detailing for the screening around uh, the skylight of the water tank. This is just a simple uh, metal uh, privacy screen set at uh, eight feet in height uh, and uh, set inboard uh, from the edge of edge of the roof. It's an open open screen, um, but provides some some visual uh, blocking of some of those elements to the south. Um, looking at the the pergola, so again there there are two pergolas. There's this one that extends off that upper rooftop uh, penthouse. Uh, 19 foot by 19 foot and um, eight foot six in height, uh, open um, with a uh, wood slat roof. And then the one off the back of the roof uh, measuring 14 foot nine by 20, uh, 20 feet and also uh, eight foot six um, metal frame with, uh, with wood slats across the roof. Um, so turning to the annex again, the approved elevation on the left, the current elevation on the right, and then the proposed elevation. So as I mentioned earlier, the approved elevation had a one-story addition that spanned the full width of the building. Uh, the current condition, there's a um, sort of uh, bulkhead penthouse up on the roof presently, occupies about a half to, to two thirds of the, of the roof in elevation. Um, and then the proposed uh, penthouse, which is at the same elevation as the proposed, sorry, same elevation as the approved penthouse, but is, um, is a bit uh, narrower. It is, uh, let me just check my dimensions. It's uh, six feet, um, sorry, 16 feet narrower uh, in this dimension than, than the approved. And it's set back six feet uh, from, from, from the approved location. And then I'll also just point out the approved railing was a, a picket railing. And so, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's just an open pipe railing that's being uh, proposed. So it just cuts down on the density and the appearance uh, appearance of of the railing on that upper roof, which is which is a code required railing. So um, again, looking at the approved plan here on the left and the proposed plan, so you can see obviously the the setback here, um, fifteen feet eleven inches from the lot line. So it, instead of extending the full width, it's held back sixteen feet, sixteen feet as well from the uh, from the back of the parapet, 
um, as opposed to the 10 foot as approved. Uh, and then off the back, the volume is sliding to the south slightly. Um, uh, there was a 33 foot setback off the back of the, uh, the property line, uh, and that's been slid back to 30 feet. So it's a, a three feet further from the front elevation uh, than what was approved. Uh, we also have a, a screen, uh, as I mentioned, around the base of the, the water tank here. Uh, looking at this in elevation, approved, current, and proposed, uh, a pre-patinated uh, copper uh, facing on the, uh, on the penthouse. The elevations do not change, the railings change, as I mentioned, and of course, the reconstruction uh, in a pre-patinated copper of that really fantastic uh, cornice and uh, detailing across the upper section of the building. Um, I also mentioned that these windows uh, will be replaced. Uh, the windows below were all replaced in aluminum. These had not been uh, replaced before the permit expired. So we need to update that approval uh, for aluminum windows. And the windows that are proposed here will match all the detailing of the windows and the floors below. Um, some details for the uh, copper restoration across the cornice, um, working from that historic photograph largely to, to redevelop those, those details. Um, this is a sheet from the previous approved uh, set of window drawings, just to indicate that we'll be picking up the same detailing, uh, brick molds, dimensions, et cetera, as the windows uh, on the floors directly below. Um, side elevations of the annex uh, approved, existing, and proposed. You can see here uh, that 10-foot setback off the back uh, of the cornice, uh, now at 16 feet, uh, and then a slightly shallower setback um, by three feet off the back of the building. Uh, side elevations will be finished in, uh, in a brick, similar to the, the brick below on the, on the lower floors. Uh, and then the railing, uh, again, you know, that open pipe railing on the upper roof. Um, some details for the screen uh, at the annex building, again, similar to the one of the Chatsworth, an open um, metal uh, open screen in aluminum, similar to the screening that's been installed and uh, approved and installed on the on the roof of the Chatsworth at screening mechanical equipment off the, the south building, uh, also at eight feet, similar to the height of the one at the Chatsworth. Um, and then finally, the last section of this really is uh, visibility uh, study. So um, we've rebuilt uh, the mock-up uh, or the, 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 pent the mock-up for the penthouse at the annex, but also the other proposed elements the pergolas, railings, et cetera. So those are all now um, mocked up on the roof. Um, one thing I will point out, so, so on, the, on the photo here on all these slides, on the photo on the left will be a photograph of the mock-up. Uh, on the right uh, is, a, is a rendered view, which illustrates, and you can see it here, I'll zoom in. Um, well, the zoom in is here. We've, we've rendered in um, the reconstructed copper cornice. Uh, and then behind that in this sort of green tone is uh, is the addition behind it. This red line, um, we've sort of done ourselves a bit of a disservice. This is that very thin pipe railing. So this uppermost section that, that's been mocked up at, with a, a red painted board is you know, a pipe rail that's maybe two inches in diameter. So what you see very apparent above what would be the addition is actually just a, will be a black painted railing. So um, a few views to share with you both from Riverside Drive as well as within within the park and then on 71st Street. So this is the view looking uh, south, southwest from 73rd Street. Um, you know, the, this is this is sort of what your eye takes in and then a zoomed view here on the bottom. Um, the, the visibility is uh, less than what was approved by the commission at the public meeting back in 2014. We know that because it's further back and it's 16 feet shorter. Uh, the Obviously the cornice uh, represented and rendered here at the annex and at the Chatsworth um, is, is the same and, and will actually block some of these, roof, these rooftop features. Um, this is a view sort of roughly in line with 74th Street. Um, this is the view that you see when you're standing there and then with the zoom lens down below. Uh, what you're seeing here is that uh, metal uh, screen uh, around the, the elevator bulkhead. Um, and then, you know, through this tree, you're seeing a bit of the pipe railing above the, the addition. Again, you know, we're talking about this zone in here. Um, the leaves, um, remarkably, are many of the leaves are still on the on the trees. The, this, these were just, just photographed. So 
Um, you know, there might be a little bit more visibility when the leaves come off, but, um, you know, it will be basically the pipe railing here and this, this will be unchanged. Uh, and then more or less from the same spot, but looking a little bit to the, to the east, looking at the annex. So again, you know, we're, we're looking at this area here. Uh, that's a photograph uh, of the mock-up. This is the rendered view. And then this is the, the zoomed view of the rendering. And I'll actually zoom in on the zoom. Just again, you're seeing the reconstructed cornice in green. That's the, the penthouse. Uh, and then unfortunately in red is this very slender, thin uh, pipe railing. So that will be significantly less noticeable um, when the railing is constructed than, than our mock-up itself. Um, a, a view from 74th Street looking south. Again, we're looking at this zone, the, the, the mock-up. Um, here, and then the zoom view, the screen wall here at the base of the uh, water tower. Uh, and then what you're seeing here is the, the front edge of the pergola in front of the existing, um, the existing uh, penthouse up on that upper roof and some of the, the pipe rail. So um, most of the, the new elements uh, on the Chatsworth in particular are happening in front of other elements. So you're not seeing them sort of silhouetted um, uh, above uh, above the upper roof. Um, coming around to the uh, to the side of West End and 71st, and I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see again, there is a moment um, when you're standing on the southeast corner of 71st and West End Avenue. Again, what you're seeing here is largely railing, uh, but we've we've mocked it up in a, in a sort of <laughs> heavier weight. And then you're seeing, I think, a little bit of uh, the pergola here. So this is sort of zooming in um, on, on this sort of moment off the back of the building. So again, this is sort of a, a rear facade uh, at, at some distance, but just to share that with you. And then um, on 71st Street, uh, closer to the building. So this is the Southern wing of the Chatsworth. Um, you're looking uh, north uh, Northwest. And again, I'll zoom in here. Um, again, this is railing on the upper roof of the, um, uh, of the back of the Chatsworth, previously approved under the previous uh, permit, which has expired. So we're um, basically adding this back into the scope. So that's just a, that's the the, the pipe, uh, sorry, that's the four inch on center uh, metal, uh, metal black painted railing uh, here in that location. So that's, um, that's visible again, sort of this one moment um, we were out there, I'm six feet tall. One of my colleagues is a little shorter. She didn't see it, I could see it, but we wanted to be sure to uh, to represent it in, in this. Uh, and then finally, um, I think this is actually gonna end up being pulled out of the, the public hearing scope because none of this is visible from the public way, but there's an inner courtyard between the annex and the Chatsworth. Uh, and there's a proposal to lower some of these window openings to to allow doors uh, out into this uh, into this space. So. Um, we have a, a plan that illustrates sort of where, indicates where those are occurring. Um, there are seven locations. The only visibility is from, uh, into this courtyard, I should say, is from the south side of 71st Street looking in. But because this is so narrow, this little uh, access alley, none of this work is visible from the street. So, you know, these are very uh, utilitarian elevations. And so we're just lowering uh, windows to allow for, for doors in, in five locations at the Chatsworth and two on either side of, uh, of the annex elevation. Uh, and then finally, just an overall photo as the building uh, appears today. Uh, much of the restoration work has been done. All the wood windows at the base of the building have been restored. Uh, many of the upper floor windows have been restored and we're looking forward to resuming work on the building, finishing the restorative components uh, and having the project um, completed um, as soon as possible. <laughs> so with that, um, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, um, I really don't, uh, uh, Clara, you wanna start with your questions? Um, yeah, I guess I'll, yeah, this will be questions only at this point, I think if I can. I mean, I've, I've studied this a lot and thanks to um, both Madge and, and, um, and, and Michelle for spending time with me puzzling out what we were seeing. I, I just, uh, before I ask a couple, some questions, I wanna just say that, um, the mock-up on the um, on, on the annex was actually only built yesterday, <laughs> um, and um, so whatever. If anybody went to see any of this before yesterday, before today, before today, 
they didn't see what you would see today and what was visible this afternoon. Um, the other thing I want to say before a couple some questions is that, um, as was referenced, we saw this, we saw the prior application at our committee and then at or the predecessor of this committee and then full board in December of 2013. Um, at that point, um, our resolution, which Mark was kind enough to distribute to all of us tonight, disapproved what was uh, applied for in terms of the rooftop additions, um, approved the, uh, I learned a new word here, Chano, um, um, and, and the uh, restoration of the copper elements. Um, and um, and that, that was what it was then. It went to LPC and at LPC, uh, what was proposed to us and we disapproved was cut back somewhat. We weren't part of that process. Um, it was not a transparent process. It, it wasn't then, and I'm not sure it would be now. But anyway, it was uh, it was cut back, but it but uh, stuff was built. So um, the questions I have now are one thing, um, and I'm so sorry, it's cast did not talk yes. about, and maybe this is a nothing much thing, was the extension of the chimney um, that is in one place described as being in the southwest corner of the of the north building um and you know I, what you sent to us we have i was we spent a lot of time with these plans we had um received a few days ago they are not dated um and didn't have page and didn't have page numbers i don't think um but i'm afraid now that my page numbers don't match what you showed tonight so we've lost that efficiency of being able to refer to the same pages at least by number on a pdf but in any event, um, just to try to see what we can do with this chimney on what was page 17, and I don't know what page you have now because you didn't talk about the chimney, um, you're showing a round chimney, existing water tank. No, it's not that. Um, Are you looking at an elevation or a plan? I'm looking at a plan, a rooftop plan on the 13th floor. Okay, uh, I have that up here. Yeah, okay. this is this is the chimney here. That's the chimney. Okay, um, so that is on the southwest yeah, corner. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's currently, let me try to phrase my questions. Maybe there's nothing to this, but um, it's it's round. I mean, I can actually see it from where I have a vantage point. It appears to be round and, and made out of stone, actually. That may be a, 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 um, an optical illusion. Um, you then say on the next page, you show it again, but then what you show, so so question one is, did you do a mock-up of your increased height on your chimney? Is there a mock-up of the, of the extra 12 feet or 11 something you wanna to add to the chimney? We did not, and in large part because it's impossible to get to, to build a cylindrical mock-up directly above there. Okay. So we, we, you know, looking at the sight lines um, and knowing, you know, this photograph I think is illustrative here. Let me just quickly go down to um, that street photograph here. Yeah. Um, it, the the chimney is sort of way behind this, mm -hmm. so um, we don't think it's we don't think it's visible um, in this in this view. So, because um, my concern today. It, when I went all around in the park, uh, all around in the park at the upper level of Riverside Park, lower level, all around from 71st Street, et cetera, without a mock-up, and because you have not, because it's another 12 feet, um, I could not form an opinion as to whether it would be visible or not. Um, so I think this elevation may be, may be helpful. So this yeah. is, this is, this is the approved elevation. This is its current elevation and it's brick with some, some stone trim or uh, uh, terracotta trim, uh, and this is the extension. So this is this is constructed presently. This this volume, um, and you can't you you can't see you know I mean maybe from Westchester, but you know if you look at a sight line, but like the the angle from this point to this point is yeah. so is so shallow that you'd be. Uh, two miles north of this spot before you ever saw the top of oh, this. Thank you for going to this page, which I have a different number on. Um, so what I was gonna ask here, okay, so you got approval to go way up and in brick and uh, to add like 11, seven or something. Never did that. Um, and so it's still as it is currently, but now you're showing it as square as opposed to round. 
It's it, it, it is cylindrical. This is a you know this is a two dimensional drawing. It will be round. It would be round. Okay, that's answering yes. that question. Yes. Um, and I guess I don't want to do comments until later, but it's so convenient now. I would say I am troubled by the idea if this goes all the way up of it's not being brick. I'm happy to hear it's round. Um, I'm not persuaded one way or another that it would not be visible because you got no mock-up. But um, in any event, the idea of this metal cladding is somewhat the concern. But I think you've answered the questions I have on the chimney. So going on, um, the main, I guess it, it's, it's sort of a question. Um, it, it, looking at all the plans, it appears to me that what you're asking to do in terms of these two exterior staircases going from the two penthouse additions on the main Chatsworth um, up to the roof of the new 13th floors, um, you're adding patios. In fact, you've already added the pavers. Um, they've gone ahead and done the pavers in front of the, uh, there on the right, you see the pavers have already put been put in over there. Um, and the privacy screen. It seems to me that, or the screens and the pergolas. It seems to me what this is about um, is making what had been one story penthouses on the 13th floor, adding um, usable terrace space on the 14th floors um, accessed by exterior staircases, which were not in the original uh, application. Um, and that the privacy screen, it seems to me, isn't to make, uh, isn't to screen us from the water tower, which, which I don't think, which, you know, we've, but to the extent we've seen it, we've always seen it, but is really to provide privacy between the West penthouse and the East penthouse. And that privacy screen, which is in a mock-up, it's not a mock-up, it seems to have been built. It's not in red or orange uh, tape. It seems to have been built, um, is in fact quite visible from uh, a lot of locations in, in Riverside Park. So I guess th the way this is a question is at heart is what all of this additional rooftop stuff is at the 14th floor with the pergola, with the this and that to provide um, desirable outdoor space um, to the residences to the residents of these two penthouses. Is that a question? Yeah, I guess it is. Isn't that what all this is really about? <laughs> right. I mean, the, the project had always anticipated, and you can see it in this approved plan. It had always anticipated, you know, usable, occupiable rooftop spaces, and you know, being outside is a premium these days, and um, it's no different than it was previous in terms of the intent of using and ac accessing the upper roof. What's different, though, is exterior stairs uh, added. Um, well, this, the stair is this. That stair was built and usable as part of this mock-up, and it's it's not visible. So um, there is a stair that connects this upper level with this lower level. Correct. Um, I not think visible. that stair is slightly visible I, from many. You know, I was looking from many angles today. I think a piece of that mock-up of that stair is visible. I don't believe that the western one is is visible. Anyway, let me just see if I have anything. It's a qu I don't want to, I don't want to dominate the discussion, but let me see if I had any other questions because I got comments to come. Um, I guess for now, that's the questions and I'll wait for comments. Hey, Mark. Thank you, Clary. Thank you. I also have more comments than questions, but to the extent that I have questions, I'd like to first focus on the privacy screen, as I believe it's being referred to. Um, the I don't know that we saw a color or a description of the materials for that, or whether it will have any kind of design. Can you speak to that, please? Uh, it is a just. A, it's a simple. Let me run down to here, and oh. Richard, feel free to jump in. But um, this is this is a, this is the annex, but it's the same. It's the same detail. Uh, it's a, a painted uh, aluminum. It's a sort of a bronze uh, finish, uh, similar to what's been approved for the screening around the mechanical equipment on the south roof of the Chatsworth. Um, right. It's just a louver screen. Yeah. So you can see here it's open with a sort of a slatted angle. 
Okay, thank you. Um, the um, uh, you have now clarified that the chimney extension will be round. So thank you for that. Um, again, it, uh, it looks like you're trying to, at least the drawing that you showed had a sort of a reddish hue to it. Uh, can you speak to its color and, sure. um, and, and whether there'd be a design? Because if I remember correctly last time, there was an effort made, it was proposed to be in brick and that the striping, the stone striping would be emulated at the top. Um, uh, I don't see that here. Um, and I'm just wondering what it's what it's all going to look like. So as it's been designed, Richard, maybe you could talk to the sort of structural challenges of doing this in brick. I mean, it is a cylindrical metal um, extension. It would be painted a brick red. Um, so we're, we're, you know, we're just working with what we have to sort of emulate that color. But the intent is to sort of take that same tone um, and run it across the, the, the metal uh, extension. Um, That's correct. The issue is the ability to build this because it's at the edge of the building, it's 12 stories in the air um, and the need to make it as light as possible. Well, we also required um, by code to have this chimney this high. Right? Well, you're required by code to do that because of all the other things you're building. But um, the, um, I guess the, the concern that I'm trying to highlight is when things try to look like they're the same, but they're not. Uh, so I'm wondering if there's any other color choices that you have considered and why you didn't go with them. Um, you know, it's funny, I think there was at one point there was some thought of doing this in a just a neutral gray. Um, but I think we got feedback in our meetings with landmarks that they wanted to see something that was in the same tone as brick, just so it would sort of not draw itself, you know, draw attention to itself. I think this is, you know, I mean, I think we would take your recommendations on this. I, I do think, you know, a, a red tone sort of consistent with the brick is probably the right way to go. But, um, you know, I think we'd be happy to hear your recommendations on that. If Thank I could you. just ask quickly, is the current round chimney, is it actually red brick? Because it certainly looks like gray stone, but is it red brick? Yes. Okay. That's correct, okay. right, Richard? It is brick, yes? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, with respect to the pergolas that are proposed, are they wood with wood slats? Are they, or, or are they some other material? What color would we expect to see? Because it appears as though they would be in some respects visible. What what are they going to look like? They are metal with wood slats. So the, <laughs> the I'm going to say the roof, but it's not a solid roof. They're wood slats across the roof. So you'll sort of be, you know, it's a gray tone frame, I think, with with wood slats. Sorry. Why this... why metal on the supports? Richard, do you want to? Um... Sure, yeah, it's for efficiency of design, design, making it as small as possible to make it as open as possible. Okay, um, with respect to the windows that are being redesigned on the Chatsworth on the top floor, and this may just be my uh, reading it on a very small screen. Sure. Are those triangles designed uh, meant to show the operability or are there going to be muntins in there? No, no, that, that's just that operability. operability. Yeah, okay, so that's, great. that's how you indicate a hopper. Um, you know, no, no, I got it. I got it. I just when you when we when we saw the per, the the plans there, they didn't look dotted, and therefore it looked like they were they were mountains. But that's just because the screen was so small. Right. Um, and um, were the pipe railings on top of the rooftop additions part of the last application? I have a vague recollection that they were at one point and then they were withdrawn from the last application back in 2013. Am I just hallucinating or is that uh, the state of play? Um, th th those, requ those roofs require fall protection. So uh, I'm, I, they were included previously. Okay. Um, okay, the rest I have, I think are comments, not questions. So I thank you for that. Okay, Ma thank you, Mark. Madge? Hi, uh, just one question. When I walked down 72nd Street, a lot is visible. I was surprised. What is that long uh, mesh going up toward the, alongside the old chimney? It had a lot of the orange stuff on it. So I assumed it was something that was happening in that position. Can you tell me what that is? 
Um, I think that may be just type scaffolding associated with repair work, uh, ongoing repair work. Let me just see if- So it's I, nothing being added. Not, uh, let me just- Or changed. Let me just try and find a, an, a well, I'll start with the, are you talking about here? In this location? I'm sorry, I can't see it. I don't want to make life difficult. It's right in front of the old, beautiful, beautiful chimney. Yeah, it was I all guess surrounded. This, by yeah, this is that you're talking about, Madge. Yeah, this yeah. is not nothing more than repair. This is not anything added onto the side of the building. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have questions? Do, you may have the public. Yeah, do you have a copy of the uh, approval from LPC? From 2015? Yes, sir. I do. Can you send that to us? Um, sure. Oh yeah, Mich Michelle, this, this evening and somewhat belatedly, I asked if Jesse, our, our staff right. person, could yeah. get that for us. And what, working with the LPC people at extra hours, I guess, today, all they were able to get was screenshots of first pages of things at this point. So yeah, um, no, we'll, we'll send this, we'll send this to the board office. I, this okay. is the C of A for, for the Chatsworth. We have the full, I mean, it's a scan, it's, but it's relatively legible. It's the perforated copy. So yeah, we'll absolutely share that with you. Okay. Because I need, in my mind, I need to compare what you asked for, yeah. what you decided to build, what you decided not to build, and what you're asking to build. Sure. I have to put it in a chart. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then of course I agree with Clary, the pages that we have don't match the pages that you have. So I was going- Yeah, through. yeah. Cool. Sorry about the, the shuffling. Yeah. Anybody else have questions before I go to the public? No. Okay. So, um, is Max still here, or are yeah, you doing this? I okay. am, and we do have two hands. I see so far. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go in the order that I'm seeing them. Uh, so that no would problem. be Christina first. Um, Can we clear the screen? Oh, sure. Thank you. Yep. And Christina should now be enabled to talk. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you? Okay. So I, I'm actually, I'm speaking on behalf of my mom who's lived in the Chatsworth for um, oh, 25 years. She lives on the first floor and her apartment is to the right of the main entrance. Um, so this is more generally, but for the last five years, I think it's very relevant that there has been an illegal, um, both full and now very recently partial scaffold that has uh, marred the facade of the Chatsworth and has negatively affected the quality of life for tenants, specifically, obviously, concerning me, my mom, who lives in the dark because of the shed that continues to cover her entire apartment on the first floor. Uh, the Chatsworth board has repeatedly deflected questions from me about who owns the current scaffold, how long it will remain in place, they admit it's illegal, as does the DOB. There have been more than 30 complaints in the last three years, and at least 10 violations have been issued by the DOB with fines incurred. None of the legal information required, license number, company number, contact number, is on the scaffold. The scaffold itself has been up for more than a decade. The Department of Tenant Advocacy is currently investigating this issue. And so I guess my question would be why the Chatsworth Realty Corps should be trusted to do this work in a timely fashion and take the scaffold down on a set schedule when the corporation has already shown such incredibly grave irresponsibility and disregard for the violations that are currently cited and the effects of the scaffold, um, the effects that it has on tenants to note the incredibly dubious behavior regarding the scaffolding has been continued by the building's board in the two years since the developer HFZ went bankrupt. Um, I, I do realize, of course, you, are, you care about the appearance and I believe 
that this illegal scaffolding ha that has been up needlessly for years. I mean, there's been scaffolding now, even in the last year, if you want to start the pandemic, um, 2021, you know, buildings all around my mom's apartment. And I grew up there, so I know it well. Everyone was doing work again. This has, there has been no work on this in at least four years prior to the pandemic. Um, so yeah, to this day, it ruins very much of the look of the building in addition to the tenant's overall well-being, specifically my mom, which uh, they have made clear that they do not care about. I myself am a public defender in Boston, um, and I've been dealing with these people for the last two years, and I do not believe they should be rewarded for this behavior. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. your time and your comments. Thank you. Um, I see Gray Newman next. Go ahead, Gray. Thank you. Can you hear me as well? Yes. Yes. Just to be, uh, just a few quick questions. The first, just to be clear, the work that's been done in the last week and a half on the rooftop of the annex, that is only to install the mock-up, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is there any um, HVAC equipment that is gonna be moved or modified or added on the annex rooftop? Uh, I don't believe so. Richard, can you confirm that? I don't think that's... No, there will not be rooftop equipment. Okay. The privacy screen, could you go back to the privacy screen, if possible, surrounding the water tank on the annex property? Is it around the entire perimeter or just a portion of it? I wasn't really clear. Sure. Um, it's just here. Okay, so it's, it's I can see that now. So it's yep. privacy from the from the vantage point of the tenant of that unit proposed to be built. Right, and just right. So it's just so this roughly L shaped. Okay, and then final question: the pipe railing on the north side is that something that can be mocked up or not? Um, it has been mocked up. Oh, it has. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's unfortunately the, the element that's shown in bright red here, but um, it, it is like a two inch pipe. Red. It will be much less apparent than this. Okay, great. And it's okay. Is there, and just final question, I appreciate you taking um, the time this evening. If sure. I wanted to speak with someone about it, is there um, a contact person from your office that is available to you know, receive questions or further follow up from the public? Um, sure. Yeah, we can distribute questions to to Richard or to Jason. Yeah. Um, let me uh, you give me your email address and I'll, I'll shoot you an email right now. Sure. Um, if that's OK with the committee to give my email address over. Sure, or we, can, we can do it through the board office, whatever you prefer. Why don't I do that on, in the con Well, I just would rather not hand my email address. Uh, of course. Understood. Um, if you can email the board office, and then yeah. I think you all can reach me or, or my colleague Sarah Schur, who yeah, uh, that we can do. Uh, but, yeah, and good. Mr. Newman, I want to tell you, you're you're entirely welcome to come to our full board meeting on December sixth. Okay. Because we are only voting on we're only uh, voting on a resolution as a committee, but our resolution has to go in front of the full board for their approval or disapproval or partial approval or partial disapproval. And okay. you're welcome to come to that meeting and speak and ask questions as well. Okay, thanks. And to reach out to you, the CB7 Preservation Committee, is there an email that, a public email that I can send a note to so you can forward? Cast? Sure. Thanks, um, Max. Yeah, so what I would recommend is um, just go to our website. You can easily get that if you don't have it already uh, by going to uh, Google, typing in Community Board 7, and um, uh, it'll become fairly, fairly apparent um, on there how to um, send us an email, and then we can go from there. The Preservation Committee. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you very much. And then Thank maybe so just, uh, it could be helpful because we get so many in, in that specific portal, uh, just maybe reference it uh, tonight's meeting or something like that, or the address of it uh, in, in the subject line of the email. We'll be able to get it more quickly. 
Great, thanks. Okay. Yeah, yep, thanks. Thank or, or put Chatsworth. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Thank you for your time and your questions. Sure, thank you. Um, I see we actually have, yeah, we do have, we have just a couple more. I saw uh, Robert and then Greg. Go ahead, Robert. Hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. All right, so I guess my comment is, is along the lines of the first commenter, whose uh, poor mother, I guess, has been uh, living under the shadow of that uh, shed. And I don't live in the building, but I live in the neighborhood. And what that woman had to say was entirely correct. That shed has been up there for uh, a decade with no work being done for the past five or six years. It, you know, I pass by that park twice a day when I go to the park with my dog. And uh, I can't stand it. Um, you know, there's no work being done. I have no idea why the shed has not been taken down. Uh, so who, who, I guess my question is, who vets these uh, 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 property owners uh, as to their finances. I mean, maybe this is the this is a huge issue for probably every other building in in Manhattan, if right. not the whole city. Let me tell you, and we on the uh, preservation committee walk around with like a pain in the side of our <laughs> our, our uh, stomachs thinking about this. I'm sure right. at least two thirds of the committee is under the same shadow including myself, of a uh, scaffolding. Right. This I res respectfully request we leave to another day when we can all sit around and, and pull our hair out of our head and figure out. But maybe well, you should first try to get in touch with Gail Brewer. Exactly. Because she has a particular, uh, um, that's a particular thorn in her side as well. Okay. I, actually, I actually contacted uh, about a year and a half ago the former um, Councilwoman, I, I forget yeah. her name, Rosenberg or maybe Rosenthal. Rosenthal, right. And, uh, you know, I spoke to one of her associates, didn't get much done. Maybe Gail will help me out a little more. Yeah, I, I think you might get a better, uh, at least a beginning place to go with her. Okay. All Thank right, you, Mr. Is, is there, may, may, may is there any consideration, though, to the finances before permits are, are allowed? Do we, do we know? I don't know. We don't usually, we don't usually, we don't. Our the purview of our committee has nothing to do with the financing. Right, I understand. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Lerner. Thanks for your time. Um, I see we have just one more, Michelle. Uh, thank Greg, you. who I can promote now. Um, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Good, good, good evening, um, and thank you, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, I think one of the committee members uh, mentioned that the mock-ups uh, on the annex had only been uh, up for the last twenty-four hours. Uh, I appreciate uh, you know the, the the photos and the renderings that were provided. Uh, I took a picture uh, of the annex. Uh, this evening, and um, it seemed to be, you know, significantly more imposing uh, than has been presented. And if it's possible, I don't know if I could share the picture. I just wanted to share the picture and just understand what I was looking at vis-a-vis -vis what was presented. Um, is there? Is it possible to share something? It's enabled, so you're, uh, okay, you're, I you're able. To, yeah. Got it. Okay, let me let me try to do this, guys. Apologies. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Great. Okay, so that's a photo uh, as of seven o four p.m. this evening mm -hmm. uh, of the annex, and and I think. The only thing in the mock-ups was the little red uh, top of that, but it's it's quite an imposing structure, and I think does change the appearance of the of the annex significantly. So uh, maybe I'm not understanding what I'm looking at, or maybe uh, that's somehow hidden by uh, the the decorative elements that Where are proposed was the to be photo, Where was the photo taken from? So it's it was roughly the same corner. Uh, I know it's it's zoomed in, but it's roughly the same corner that uh, I think the architects uh, took the same the photo, the similar photo from the annex. So it was 
Riverside and I think 73rd. Mm-hmm. From street level? Street yeah. level, correct. Yeah. correct. But zoomed in. Zo- zoomed in on the iPhone, exactly. Uh, can I just respond to that? Just to sure. maybe so I, I think the um, I think you're absolutely right. Greg. Right? This, you know, this is photographed um, without the, the cornice restoration. And that cornice element based on the historic photographs is, you know, two or three feet above that upper uh, line of the existing copper cornice. So that ends up blocking a large part of the mock-up. We built the mock-up based on the dimensions of the proposed addition. We didn't mock up the, the cresting, but we know how tall it was so we can render that into the photograph. So the lower half of, of the addition itself will be blocked by, by the restorative uh, copper work. So, but you're you're right. That's that's the that's the discrepancy that you see between what you see on the street and what the rendered views look like. Okay. Um, so, so then, then perhaps a couple other questions. Uh, you know, one is um, there. Uh, you know, the the chimney. So I'm in one of the units uh, on the tenth floor uh, that's facing the inner inner courtyard in the back, um, and. Uh, you know, our unit is relatively high. So we have, you know, somewhat decent sunlight, although we're inside the courtyard. So we're already, uh, you know, quite dark. And, and my concern is with the, the, the increased chimney uh, size on the main building and moving the, the unit, uh, the annex addition on the top roof back further, increasing you know, the windows there, which were much larger uh, in this uh, in this approval request vis-a-vis what they were a decade or so ago, you know, you, you're, you're sort of further, I think, impairing everybody who is uh, on the inside from both sides, making everything else, uh, you know, everything much, much darker for us. Um, when we we're already sort of living with uh, with what we've what we've purchased, so is there is there a uh, is there a plan to you know talk or work with existing shareholders who already uh, have not gotten what they've been promised uh, in terms of the original offering plan uh, in this building, given HSC's bankruptcy? Uh, um, Jason, are you ready to take my question? We need to step in for a second because this is getting a little bit. Yeah, uh, this is a little bit beyond the this purview is getting of what beyond. the this, this, we, looks at. And, and, and thank you, everyone, for attending. My name is Jason Jones with Star Property Trust. Okay. And so we are coming to you today, not as developer, not as kind of sponsor developer or, or, or the new developer. We're coming today as a property owner. Okay as holder of the shares of certain units in the Chatsworth, okay? And some of those units are these penthouse units that were not finished. Starwood Property Trust was the lender for HFC and as such has taken control of these as was our collateral when HFC stopped uh, the construction of the project. We today, are part of a building that is a mix of one, resident shareholders, like I believe Mr. Stefanov happens to be, um, and others um, that own shares in the Chatsworth. Now, our, our shares, our units happen to be mostly not completed. We are looking to complete those units, right? So I can't be here and speak to, you know, certain things such as scaffolding, or discussions with with other residents and things like that. One, this is not the appropriate venue for that. This is a design venue, okay? And secondly, um, we're we're shareholders and and property owners, and and we're looking to finish the units um, as close to the original design intent as was originally approved back when this project was developed uh, by HFC. So hopefully that clears this up. Um, and we can talk about, you know, design intent uh, here. Jason, I am talking about design intent. I'm talking about a, uh, a a chimney that's taller than it was in the original plan. Well, let's let's and a, 
if we could. Yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and Thank Richard, you, Mr. Stefanov. Appreciate your time. I mean, I'm happy to share this. Um, Richard, I think you could perhaps speak to this, but the dimensions, uh, the height of the chimney hasn't changed from, from the approved. Not one inch. I have uh, two questions. The the I have two questions in the QA. One of them is um, vis a vis the proposed additions to the rooftop, with the, to the roof, are they accessible to all residents or for penthouse residents only? And for that answer is. Pardon? It's for the penthouse units. Okay. And uh, when will the fa facade repairs be scheduled to, to be uh, commenced? I guess the repairs, I guess it's, uh, I don't know how you answer a question like that. You need approval. From well, LCC, the, the, the yeah, right weather, it, you need. Yeah, that, that question is not, we're not the appropriate party to ask that question to. All right. Any uh, other any, comments from the public? Yeah, I, I guess I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I still don't understand this chimney uh, question because it, it, is the chimney a part of the collateral uh, that Starwood received? Yeah, well, okay, uh, excuse listen, me, though. With listen. respect, the question of collateral and who's the developer is not in our purview. It's now quarter to 10. Maybe Mr. Sefanoff, with respect, you can do this offline, contact these people and they can answer your question. And, and Michelle, can we move along on this? Yes, uh, I, 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 we need to do that. We need to do, thank you, Jay. Mr. Sefanov, we need to do that. And uh, so I shall move along. Can we clear the screen again? Oh, sorry, yes. Any, thank you. Any other uh, committee, Questions. Paige. Oh, you're muted, hon. No, I'm I'm kind of floored by the amount of information um, from 2013 mm -hmm. to now. Um, I don't feel qualified to even vote until I have the weekend to read through it. So I'm gonna just say that um I'm very um appreciative of all the work this committee's done, um, but I don't want to throw my vote away um, backing the wrong horse, as it were. Um, it, there's too much to take in here. And a lot of the stuff that we've heard tonight isn't really germane to um, as um, we would normally call our purview. It's mm -hmm. not landmark issues there. You know, we need to separate um, what's going forward um, mechanically and architecturally from all the other problems. And it's really, really hard to do um, with, a, with this. So um, th that's my thoughts. Um, I've got eight pages of notes here. Um, I'll send them around um, and ask the committee to um, uh, correct any mistakes that I may have made to make it easier for people to make a decision. Thank you. I mean, Jay, I'm having a really hard time with this application also, to tell you the truth. I'm, like I said, there's what was our, our, origin, our resolution in 2013, then what Landmarks did, then what the, uh, what the building did based on what Landmarks approved and what the building didn't do. And then now what they're asking I appreciate this application. Um, uh, Clary and Madge and I spent a lot of time staring at mock-ups <laughs> and going through these plans. But how does everybody else feel about uh, a, a vote? Well, my name having been taken in vain. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I think it's less confusing than it appears. This is this application. It is not the original application. It's not the original condition before the original uh, uh, application. Okay, fair enough, you're right. I think we have to look at the condition of the building as it is. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, some partial work was done per those applications and some of it wasn't. And 
I think we just need to treat this as a new application and determine uh, either we think that what's being proposed to be done from this point forward is appropriate or whether it's not appropriate. And if I can go on record, uh, I, I haven't seen anything in this application that I think is inappropriate. Um, I'm satisfied with the minimal visibility uh, of the, the addition. I'm satisfied with the materials. I think it's a positive that the scale has been uh, somewhat reduced. Uh, and, and as uh, Paige so correctly said, there's been off and on discussion of several issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis tenants, not that they're not important uh, and may need resolution, but this is not the, uh, the venue to resolve a lot of those questions. I think we need to look at this from a question of appropriateness uh, and move forward and, and take our vote uh, based on that. Uh, and to the extent possible, put the somewhat <laughs> confusing history away uh, and move forward from this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Um, so um, a, couple of, a couple of preliminary thoughts, and I, I know it's the late hour, but I wanted to put a little bit of a context to this as well. Uh, my first, uh, which I often forget to do, so let me do it now, is to say that um, Higgins Quaysbarth adds a lot of value to this conversation because their, their presentation is always clear. And so I'm grateful for that, even if I can't find my way to agreeing with everything that they say. It, there, we don't spend a lot of time in, when they present trying to figure out what it is they just said. So thank you for that. Um, the, um, uh, and with respect to Mr. Jones, um, it may or may not be the right form, forum for these conversations. I think it's, we are a community board and the community doesn't always parse the issues that are presented in the same way that LPC will. Yeah. Um, and it's important for us to provide a forum for folks to speak, even if this is not the place where those concerns can be remedied. So I'm glad for that. And I'm also glad that our chairs put a time limit on that. Um, so putting that together with what Jay said, which is our focus ought to be uh, in effect treating this as a new, um, we've heard a lot of references tonight to things that have been approved. I think it's important to go back to the fact that many of those things that were approved by LPC were not approved by us. And I always have a very lingering concern that we as a community board be consistent with our own resolutions going forward. And so I'm gonna highlight four things that I think are inappropriate with respect to the application. Uh, the first two vie for number one, and they are the change in the width of the rooftop addition on the annex. That now creates a, a gap tooth in what I thought was an inappropriate shadow behind the restored cornice. Uh, but now there'll be a gap in that. And I find that to be particularly troubling when people look at this beautiful building from the sidewalk along Riverside Drive going north at least as far as 75th Street and possibly beyond, as well as within the park. That gap doesn't strike me. I don't think the addition is appropriate, but if you swallow hard and say that an addition is appropriate behind that facade or behind that cornice, having a gap in it so that it only goes halfway across the or three quarters of the way across the building is not appropriate in my view. Secondly, the privacy screens on the main Chatsworth building are an addition. They're new. I find them to be very troubling. Um, I, at first, I, I saw references to them. I'm not sure from whom, so forgive if it's not you guys, that they were in effect mechanical enclosures. Um, but there's no reason to enclose a classic Rosenwalk um, uh, water tower that is ubiquitous on the Upper West Side. It is part and parcel of our historic district. And I would argue with you that removing them or obscuring them would be inappropriate. So um, now that there are privacy screens, I see even less reason to find them appropriate. I'm also troubled by the materials 
because they will be shiny at certain times of the day. They will call attention to themselves beyond that which is otherwise there. The chimney extension troubles me in terms of materials. I understand that it may be a, a mechanical or construction challenge, but they were a part of the original proposal, and I see no reason to vary from that. And I applaud the use of wood as the top of the pergola. I'm not sure that I find the introduction of the pergola itself to be inappropriate. It was. I'm sorry, uh, let me just finish. Um, um, but, but using metal to support it, I find to be uh, particularly troubling. So I would at the appropriate uh, time and subject to the chair's uh, 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 wishes on how to propose this, I would propose a resolution that would at least disapprove those four elements. By the way, the, the fenestration is fine by me. The change in the doorways is fine by me. Um, but, um, and, and the interior courtyard things are fine by me, although it sounds like you'll get staff level approval. But those four things I find to be deeply troubling in a very important um, individual landmark building. And I'll shut up. Okay, so let's just review what those four things are again. You so the change in the change width, in the width to of the, the annex of the rooftop annex. addition, mm -hmm. the lack of symmetry in addition to its being a shadow behind the cornice. Okay. Second is the privacy screens on the main Chatsworth building. Mm -hmm. The third is the materials for the chimney extension. And the fourth is the materials for the supports for the pergolas, especially the one that faces 72nd Street. Those are my four. Thank you. May I just make a, a quick clarifying point? Sure. I'm just, I'd like to just share share this elevation just in terms of your first point um, about uh, the elevation. And I, I appreciate your your input on on all this as, as I have for, for years and years presenting to, to Community Board 7. But I just wanted to sort of point out that, that the approved addition sort of as the building was constructed, I believe there's a, a bulkhead that occupies roughly the same width and about the same depth of a, as our proposed um, our proposed addition. So there is currently an asymmetry up at the roof um, and we're proposing something that's slightly um, slightly wider, but it is it is an asymmetrical condition up there currently with an addition that is about as far back as what we're proposing. Thanks for that, but I got to tell you that it, it it doesn't affect doesn't my concern because what we're um, because you're varying from something that was better, um, and so I can't agree that what you've proposed is appropriate or better than what was approved by up people other than us. And I'm pretty sure we oppose the whole thing. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, Cl I think Clary, you were next. Okay. So. Um... I largely agree with Mark, but I would want to present it in a somewhat a different way. Um, the um, what's great about these this pair of individual landmarks, the Chatsworth and its extension. First is the fabulous overall uh, north facades of both buildings uh, as a unit, um, which were once terminated by a, a word I only learned for the first time, Chano. <laughs> Um, and the cornice. Um, and um, I'm thrilled, uh, for the second time, thrilled that the Chanel and cornice will be, um, are, are going to come back. Um, so anything, and, and so these two facades stand alone against the sky, terminated or, or once terminated and again to be terminated by these beautiful copper elements. Anything that shows above those, um, However setback it is, whether it's a railing, whether it's part of a penthouse addition on either of the buildings is um, a negative to what makes those facades and those buildings fabulous in the first place. The second fabulous thing about the Chatsworth itself, not the uh, annex, uh, as is the fantastic chimney. Um, as you're walking west on 72nd Street, it's near the, it's at the north, east corner of the main Chatsworth, the chimney and its adjacent sort of engaged fancy pilaster with a, with a, um, a hood <laughs> um, are, are very visible. And uh, as you come west on 72nd Street, standing against the sky with nothing 
um, behind them or historically nothing behind them to interfere with that fabulous view that introduces you to the Chatsworth as you're going west. So in my view, anything that alters those two terrific features as visible from where they are numerously visible uh, is a problem. In um, 2013, um, when the proposals for the rooftop additions for both buildings were proposed, our uh, board um, disapproved by a very, very strong, uh, strong vote. And coincident, I mean, it's sort of odd now that because the permits expired, um, we're sort of looking afresh at, uh, at the, the annex. I mean, most of, the, most of what was proposed for the main Chatsworth has been built, not all of it, um, but the annex is a whole new, st is, is start over today. And it gives us an opportunity to be consistent with um, our prior position, consistent with what I think is what we are looking for on the facades of those buildings. Um, and once that uh, um, mock-up was created yesterday, um, and I took a look for, as others of you did today and took a, one of you took a photo, one of the members of the public, um, that annex, the proposed thing on the annex, never mind that it's going to be partially obscured by the fabulously restored cornice if that hap if that happens, um, and the Chano, um, it's still very visible. It's visible as you come down Riverside Drive. It's visible from Riverside Park to the uh, to the e looking from the west, not the super west, but the the, the northwest. Very, very visible, and in my view, as was our view in 2013, inappropriate to alter the experience, the public experience of the annex with that thing on top. I agree with Mark that the um, already built, I think, at least it looks like it's already built, um, privacy screen, which divides the east and west part of the 14th floor of the uh, and of the main Chatsworth, which I I think it's probably not really there to disguise the water tower. Certainly not from us. We would see whatever the water tower we've always seen, but rather to provide privacy bet between the two um, the penthouses at the 14th floor. That would be fine with me if we didn't see it, but we see it very clearly uh, from all over, coming from the north, coming from the northwest in Riverside Park as this metal thing that is sitting up there and otherwise disturbing the fabulous uh, termination uh, of the, at, at which will be uh, looking even better when the Chanel comes back of the main Chatsworth. So both of those two things I find very troublesome. I agree with Mark that um, the chimney has been all over the place. I mean, what another thing that troubles me is that we were told in 2013 and LPC was told we must extend that chimney for code reasons. So it's now like nine years later, the chimney wasn't extended. I mean, work's been done, work stopped, but nobody ever did anything with the chimney. And I, I, I don't understand why suddenly this chimney has to be extended if it went eight years with all this construction and requ required by code, why it never happened. Similarly, I think, Probably LPC was affected favorably by the proposal eight years ago, nine years ago, to uh, however many years, to um, replace to restore the Chanel and restore the um, uh, the cornice on the annex. So those very good things that contributed to a favorable view, they never happened either, and um, with no explanation of why all these years later the good things never happened and all that did happen was some additions that were very very difficult and controversial and cut back by the by LPC. So the chimney, I agree with Mark. Um, I, I accept that it's going to be round. Um, I don't uh, like the fact that it's going to be a piece of metal. I disagree with Mark about the color. If it's a piece of metal, I think it ought to look like what it looks like now. Um, I have to take your word for it that it's red brick, even though it looks like gray stone to me from my vantage point. Um, but I, if, if you're going to make it look like a piece of the Chatsworth that's another 12 feet tall, it ought to look like a piece of the Chatsworth. And I think Mark may have previously said something about a couple of bands of trim near the top that somehow got lost by the wayside. So I agree about that. Um, the pergola material, I don't know that I have a strong view of. 
So I will agree with whoever has said this, that um, the, the changing of the windows on the mansard on the, top of, on the top floor of the main Chatsworth building, I think is fine. You kind of see those windows from the uh, various vantage points. You don't really get much of a sense of how they operate. And in any event, I don't think they're gonna look really different. I think that's fine. Um, we've certainly, I think, probably all agree that finally getting the Chanot and getting the, the cornice is a good thing. Um, I did look from 71st Street today uh, into that courtyard. And it's certainly that courtyard between the two buildings is totally invis not visible at 72nd Street because there's a big connecting piece of architecture. Very visible entirely from 71st Street, but I will take the word for it, the word of the presenter that those particular doorways, which are set back from the center of the courtyard are not going to be visible to us. So I think I would take those off our list, whether or not um, you get staff approval for them. So um, I, I did wanna ask you one more question if I could, and it, it, is, um, it is made more difficult because the pagination um, I, that I have on what we received the other day is not the same, but if you can find a North Tower East elevation that does show the fabulous chimney and the fabulous engaged uh, oh. uh, thing <laughs> next to it. Um, okay, so let's see. So this is not the one, try the next one, next page, if you could on your, um, let me see here. Um, no, this is west. We don't want west. Try another one east. This is the east elevation. Yeah, OK. Um, oh, if this is, it's, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, sorry to make this complicated. The one I'm looking at is uh, full height and is um, maybe, it used to be page 11. I don't know what page it is now. It might be the next page. No, it's the not. Full height building elevator. What, can you describe the drawing to it's me? It's called Chatsworth North Tower East Elevation. And it's showing the full height in um, drawings. It's not um, not photos. Um, then uh, it, the reason I'm asking and I'm- I, uh, I see, I know it's, it's we, we didn't include it in the presentation because of the scale of it. Okay, yeah, so what I'm, it's okay. What you're showing is that a, two big things were approved at, or were done um, from the 2014. One is the, um, called the new brick, no, it's not, it's not labeled, but it has a, it's a, it's a big rectangle and it has a, um, a kind of a railing on top. Next to it, but further actually to the east, uh, is a smaller rectangular thing that's built, and it currently has some kind of sign on it, why I don't know, facing east. Then you show current elevation, yes, you built it. But then in the proposed elevation, you seem to have eliminated the northerly, uh, northern of the two uh, newly built structures. My question yeah. is, are you really removing it? Why does that show as white on that? Okay, so this is this was not in our presentation because there I think there are things that needed to be updated. So I'd rather not actually dwell on this. Okay. Yeah, th this elevation represented in a rendered view, which I think is you know much easier to read. It's it's this view. So okay. Is there so something not, on here that's not, not removing? Shown? You're not removing that uh, newly built thing because okay, I think that moots out that question. Then okay. I. Appreciate that okay. answer. Right. Okay, so, but this just to finally finish what I was going to say. Yeah, um, can we move on? Oh. Yes, I, I just yes. want to finish what I want to say, Peter, which is given at least my view that that fabulous chimney <laughs> that heretofore has been against a clear sky um, and, and very visible as you're going out west along 72nd Street will be very much the view to the public will be very much impaired by that metal privacy screen, which kind of looks like it's in the same plane and in my view shouldn't be there. I think Marcus said the same thing. Thank you, Clary. Jay, did you wanna say something? Yes, okay. I did. Uh, if, so very quickly, since I'm sensing how 
the direction that we may be moving in terms of a resolution that will reach a partial uh, conclusion with some uh, omissions. Uh, so we'll use Mark as a frame of reference. And I have to say that I didn't think I would live long enough uh, to see the day when Mark would object to a rooftop edition because it's too small. Uh, but in any event, uh, so let me go through the list quickly. As far as I'm concerned, the chimney is okay. And the fact that it may not have been up to code for eight years, well, maybe they should have gotten a violation. But the fact of the matter is the right thing to do uh, would be to bring it up to code. Secondly, um, uh, as far as reducing the size of the rooftop addition, even though it creates something of a gap, I feel is acceptable uh, and, and doesn't change my opinion uh, as far as it being appropriate. Uh, the, the metal supports on the pergola, if you're okay with the pergola, the, the metal supports uh, don't trouble me at all. Uh, I do agree about the privacy screens. I'm not sure, first of all, that a view from uh, the penthouse of a metal screen is really less uh, appropriate than looking at the metal supports of a water tower. I'm not sure that it makes a huge difference, but if there's some concern of uh, privacy between the penthouses, uh, there are plantings that can be made that are not permanent structure. There are a whole host of of solutions that people uh, use in these situations. Uh, and I think that putting bright, uh, a bright metal structure in the midst of all this is unnecessary. And to me, it translates into being inappropriate. So whatever we do, I would, uh, if we approve either totally or Partially, I would agree to exclude the privacy screens from uh, any uh, any approval. And that's my that's my. I'm done. Anyone else? So the sense of the committee is an approval, but for these four or five factors. Let Let's review these factors again. And then I'll ask for everybody's vote on whether they approve and or disapprove and what of the five factors we spoke about they they want they want to be they approve or disapprove. Makes for a complicated vote. Yeah, I know, but every I it seems well, I get the sense that People feel differently about these five things. Yeah. So but maybe Jay is right. Maybe we should pick the ones that are most egregious. Or, or I don't know. It's going to be. Are there any? Can I? Yeah. If I could suggest, um, if Jay wants to put forward a motion based on what he just said, which is approve everything except the privacy screens, why don't we try that? Take a vote, see if it passes. If it doesn't pass, maybe we can go the Scylla to that Charybdis and see if um, my suggestion of the four problems would, would gain traction. And if not, then I think we throw up our hands. Okay, so just review again, because now I have five things, but I, I'm, uh, it's number so, one, change in, you, you object to the change in the width of the roof. Michelle, if I may. I think the simplest vote to take is on Jay's because okay. it's basically, if I understand, I don't want to put words in Jay's mouth, um, but I, I understood him to say he approves of everything except the privacy screens. Is that so right, Jay? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. So, I so that's the simplest that. thing to take a vote okay, on. Okay, so we'll do that then. Yeah, I... I, I Which I means mean, that we're I approving 
the approving, uh, except facade changes. The uh, and we're, but we're approving the, the the change in width of the annex thing. Yes. We're approving the chimney materials. We're approving the pergola materials, and it and if you've got a fifth thing, we're approving that too. It would be it would also be approving the ex, the new exterior staircases that are new. Yeah. Well, that okay. Yeah, that's all right. So I will take a vote on the approval, but for the privacy screens. Uh, Jay. Yes. Paige. You muted Paige. Yes. Mark. No. Clary. No. Madge. No. Peter. Yes. Uh, Kay. Yes. And I'm a yes. So one, two, three, four, five, three, zero, zero. An approval of the application minus the privacy screens. Every privacy screen. Right? There's two, right? There's just one set of them, yeah. 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 Whatever. Okay, so that motion passes. Wow, okay. Oh. <laughs> Holy moly. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Paige, you and I will vo will work on the minutes, and the, uh, well, you did the minutes on the resolutions. And uh, I guess this is the end of the meeting. Right. Unless people want to stay on for a while yeah, just, and talk about it. Does want to go home early tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. You're home already. Does anybody know a pizza yeah. parlor that's open this late? <laughs> Fewer than there used to be. Yeah, really. Yeah, sure. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your good work, your hard work. Thank you, Max, for putting this together technologically. And uh, thanks to all the applicants and the community members that came. Yeah. And we will see you on December 6th. Thank you. December 6th at our full board meeting. Thank you.